Welcome to Entrepreneur's Podcast, the podcast for developpreneurs, the podcast where you get to be a fly on the wall listening to real conversations of three developers trying to tackle the challenges they face as entrepreneurs. Hey, what's up? John Sanmez here. Just want to take a second to thank one of the sponsors for this episode of Entre Programmers, DigitalOcean. So I've talked about DigitalOcean a lot before on the show, and that's because they're just such an awesome company. I use them to host all of my websites, basically simpleprogrammer.com, which gets around 200,000 pa- 200, page views a month, runs on there, super smooth, Get Up and Code runs on there, the Entre Programmers podcast that you're listening to right now, we use DigitalOcean for that. I use it for just about everything and it's, it's such a good deal you know for, as far as hosting goes right if you're going to run your own Linux server and do your own web hosting at five dollars a month which is the starting plan for DigitalOcean you just really can't beat that it's it's crazy and when you do need something super powerful uh, DigitalOcean comes through for you as well and it's so easy to scale up to that I started out on simple programmer with a ten dollar a month box and I was even able with that to get a hundred thousand page views a month without much of a problem but when I wanted to scale up all I had to do was bring the server down, expand the size, go up to the the higher size droplet, and bam, I was uh, was up there, and I've expanded it a couple of times since then. So uh, DigitalOcean, definitely awesome company. I would definitely recommend that you check it out if you have any any idea of, of creating a website online or you want to have your own Linux server to be able to do whatever it is that you want to do some development or put out a production app just a ton of great things that you can do with DigitalOcean go to DigitalOcean.com and use the code ONTOPROGRAMMERS to get $10 credit so DigitalOcean.com ONTOPROGRAMMERS is your code and you get $10 credit good for basically two months at, at a $5 box so you can check it out this episode of the Entre Programmers is brought to you by Raygun.io. Blast away the errors in your application before anybody even knows that your application has errors. It's an amazing system that allows you to find and fix bugs before your users even know that they have bugs. You can save time and money. And believe me, development time is expensive. It takes a lot of time and effort to track down these horrible bugs in production, but Raygun can help you find and fix these things faster by giving you complete stack traces of where these errors are happening and logging them for you so that you don't have to hunt them down and track them down and deal with all of the horrible mess of finding and debugging that you typically have to go through as a developer. This is full stack monitoring that allows you to monitor errors across your entire application, from the front end in the browser, to mobile applications, to the back end with Node.js or .NET or whatever it is that you're doing, you're gonna have extremely reliable error tracking in your application in no time at all. So head over to raygun.io and get started today to put some real error tracking in your application and start hunting down these bugs that you don't even know your users are running into and you'll be better off for it. It's a product and service that I've been using for almost two years inside of SignalLeaf and I really can't live without it. It's helped me so many times and I've had such great results with it. I highly recommend you check out raygun.io today. All right, we're live. Awesome. And uh, everything is awesome. All the noise has stopped. <laughs> yeah, we had a little bit of helicopter problems, but you know. And it, and I believe it's that, May. That was just me going. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> it, it's it's Friday, May twenty second. So I believe Josh is unemployed. Well, not technically until five p.m. I guess, right? Oh, okay. But, but yeah, I am I am unemployed. Um, well, actually, I it was it almost didn't happen because um, so HR today sent me over some paperwork to fill out. And one of the items was a an exit certification form. I had to like oh, you know like sign this form and date it and everything and and scan it back into them. Well, my printer, my my multifunction printer scanner would not scan the document, so. For a while there, I was I was thinking, well, you know, maybe this just isn't going to happen. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, I got it. I finally got it scanned. It only took about twenty different tries, but yeah, I'm official now. Nice, awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. You, I, I thought leaving your job would make you less official. <laughs> I'm homeless. Yeah, we were all unemployed now. Now we are really the entrepreneurs. <laughs> Although I'm less of a programmer, so I don't know. That's true. Kind of, kind of the odd man out here. 
Does anyone? I think does. Well, Derek and Chuck write code still. Yeah. But I think Derek writes the most code still. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Since most of what I do is content these days. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, yeah. What does that tell you about? <laughs> <laughs> well. I mean, it's interesting, right? And I'm sure we've had this... I know we've had this conversation before, but it, it basically boils down to what kind of commodity you want to be and what kind of value you're giving to other people. Yeah. And, you know, you can scale it better, I think, with content than you can with code. I mean, unless you're writing a SaaS app or something, but that's a different animal than writing code for hire. Yeah. So. Well, and even then, it's like the real value. Like, I mean, sure, it might be fun to write the SaaS app yourself, but... Like, you can have someone else write that yeah. as well. It's like, you know, so, I don't know. It's it's, it's interesting, like, just to, to think of, to, you know, how that mindset changes when as, as you become more as of an entrepreneur. Well, I was even, you know, I, I had, I was actually, like, thinking about this, too, like, just to take it even one level higher, right? Um, I, I, I was watching this movie. I don't remember what it was. It doesn't really matter what the movie was. But, um, but I... This, there was this like room with all these rich rich people in there, you know, wealthy kind of people that were, um, and I was thinking, and as as I looked at like some of the people in the room, I was thinking like, how do they like, you know, how are how are they so kind of rich and powerful, and and it occurred to me that I, I don't know, it's probably not connected, but anyway, it occurred to me <laughs> that that um that you only have so much time, right? Because they, cause they seem to be, like, relaxing and not, like, you know what I mean, like, and to have time. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what, that's what I thought. And, and I thought that, you know, the, the really, the, the, you have to eventually leverage uh, other people, like, delegate. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. you, you have to, like, um, you can only do so much yourself. And that's where, that's where it ties to the program. Right. It's like, as someone who writes code, code is, writing code is not leverageable. You right. cannot like you cannot you know expand that like you, you can you can become the best coder in the world and then that's it you can't produce more code right. than that right um, but right. you know as you become an entrepreneur and you leverage like in order to really really be successful you eventually have to be able to do more than one person can do and that means that you have to have a team and then and it's almost like like the more people you have working for you the the more things that you can impact in the world and so like as you start to build tiers of people that are working for you and they have people that are working for them and you right. you kind of you know eventually are yeah. the, the top person then then it's almost like you are affecting the world through like a thousand hands instead of right. one one set of hands so i think that's kind of the you know you have to go that yeah. direction if you really want to impact yeah, it's like writing code is, <clears throat> writing code, it's like that $100 an hour, $1,000 an hour thing we've talked about. Like, writing code is a $100 an hour skill. Yeah. You know, it's pretty valuable, but that's, it, you're, that's, you're going you're gonna to max out somewhere around there. Solving business problems for people, that's a $1,000 an hour skill. And right. that's where you, when you, when you become an entrepreneur and you've got coders working for you, what you're doing is you're just, you know, you're, you're telling them what business problem to solve. And that's the value that you're bringing. Yeah. Yeah. So, writing copy is also a $100 an hour skill. <laughs> or it's probably a little more than that, but that's not right. my final destination. <laughs> No, yeah, I, I've just arrived at this point where I know that. I mean, and not not everyone will ever want to have people working under them, but I, I feel like I need to like if I want to reach where I want to get to, I need to have a lot of. Uh, I'll eventually build out more and more of a team. The team yeah. will become larger and larger, just as 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 I grow. And and the key is to make it so that those those team members are somewhat uh, autonomous. You know, so they're they're handling their. Their pieces, so you actually are achieving more with less. But yeah, yeah. That um that proposal you forwarded that looked pretty good. I don't know if you can talk about that. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. yeah that's worth talking about. Yeah, that um. So I've been trying to hire my editor, right? For yeah, which is part of this, right? Is mm -hmm. with Simple Programmer. Um, it's it's and this is kind of like the, the uh, it, this is automatically building onto my business a multi tier because. The, the managing editor will be managing a bunch of writers that will be writing for Simple Programmer. And so I'll be leveraging the work of a lot of people. Um, that, and I'll be 
you know, um, and so I've been high, I've been interviewing a lot of people, and it's been interesting, like interviewing. Like I've run into some really good choices. Like there was there were a couple of recommendations and people that I spoke to that that would that would have worked out really really you know good. Um, and then there were some. It, it's funny, uh, Josh. I I went to like Odesk. I guess it's Upwork now. Okay. And I found some like you know professional journalists on there mm-hmm. that had applied for for the job. And I, I talked to them on Skype, and they just they they could not communicate over Skype. <laughs> and writers, wow. writers typically, yeah. I mean, for me, working from home has been a huge a huge bonus. Yeah. Because I've done so much. I used to hate the phone, and yeah. I still get yeah I still get a little nervous talking. But now it's just like I do this all day, you know, and yep. mm-hmm. so it's not a big deal. But um, but yeah. So I was like, I mean, like credential wise, look good. Have managed newspapers, manage you know magazines, editorial calendars, right? All this stuff. Good writers, you know, you know, art uh, awards in journalism. Mm-hmm. And um, but but I'm like, gosh, I like you can't string two sentences together over a Skype call. Like I just <laughs> cannot. Like you can't. I cannot have you managing writers. Like I just yeah. like you're gonna be herding cats because that's what programmers. You know, like, and, and right. so I just like, and I, and I can't work with mm-hmm. someone that I can't communicate with. Like, if I have to write out an email every time I want to communicate with you, it's just it's not going to work. Yeah. Right? We have to be able to have a Skype call and, and be able to and, and and get and you have to be able to get the vision. Like, it's not just I don't know. I just got this vibe of one, they didn't know how to communicate, and two, which was strange. Like, I would expect mm-hmm. you know, and then two, that they just didn't have any vision of the. It's like it's like. For them, it was like, okay, we just have to fill in, you know, uh, section A on, you know, page 13. It, it wasn't yeah. like, you know, I'm like, I'm trying to, like, look what I'm trying, I'm trying to change the world. And they're just like, uh, you know, we, yeah, I can get all this stuff scheduled for you. Um, <laughs> and so I was like, uh, sounds yeah. like, Sounds like they need a book called The, the Freelance Writer's Life Manual. Right. <laughs> Soft skills for freelance writers. Yeah. So I, I ended up turning down those, you know, what looked mm-hmm. like the most qualified people, um, and and just going with my gut. And I found someone that I was I was pretty sure I was going to hire. And then I talked to this uh, this last uh, this last um, uh, woman, uh, Eliza, uh, who who had been recommended by a guy um, Adrian from my from my other mastermind group, and uh, and he and and she was just like as soon as I went to her site, I mean. Uh, I'll give her a free plug for her site. It was, um, uh, I think it was on there. And her she's kind is, of, she's more of a content management specialist. It looks like. Yeah, but, yeah. It's her site is craftyourcontent.com. Okay. Eliza Duquet. Yep. And, oh, uh, I've heard of her. Oh, you have? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure where, but yes, I've definitely heard of her. She's got a podcast. Um, she's interviewed, and and this okay. is interesting. Like, I think I, she was on the um the the one of the writing shows, yeah, that's what it was. She was on a writing show I listened to um, with a guy named Ed Gandia. It's the, I thought I've talked about it before. It's the high income business writing podcast he does. Oh, okay. Yep. It's the one that I was binge listening to on the way to the Bob Bly event. Yep. I heard her. She's been on Entrepreneur on Fire as well, too. So. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, yeah soon, as soon as I got on the on a call with her, she was like on episode seven, too. So, so she got like a bunch of. <laughs> Still gets a lot of leads from there, but as soon as I got on the call with her, like she totally got it. She got the entrepreneurial mindset. She got my vision of what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. Like she just totally understood it. And then you know, I was looking around on her site, and I was like, "Oh, you've interviewed Mark Manson on your podcast. That's awesome. That dude is is an awesome writer. Um, she's got like Chris Gillibu Gillibu Gillibu. I'll pretend like I can say the last name. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and then she had like Glenn uh, also up on there as well. Oh wow! Which I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, because she recognized what a good like content producer he. I mean, he's like an awesome content producer, right? He writes a right. blog post and it's like super long, super detailed, like the the kind of stuff that you're saying, Josh, that you'd like to. Yeah. But but he does the research and he writes these awesome pieces. Mm-hmm. So and then I look on her, you know, her her list of resources and she's got, of course, um, you know, uh, uh, the War of Art and so. You oh know, yeah. So, so so anyway, yeah, I just have the conversation with her. Like she totally gets it. She totally understands what what I wanted to do. Um, so to me, it's it's a perfect match. And she's working on a. Um, I mean, this is a productized consulting, so it's on a retainer yeah. basis. Mm-hmm. So um, so she's going to charge me a monthly fee, but she's got a team behind her. Um, and uh, and yeah, she seems to have a 
good. Pl- I, I feel yeah. like I'm in great hands w- with her. I'm, I, you know, I was just waiting for her to send the proposal today so that I could immediately say yes. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, and so I, I think this is going to be. Her awesome. price looks too low to me. <laughs> it, it did. It did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I won't discuss the price, but yeah. well, I mean, we discuss the budget, and and honestly, like, once this thing is going, it won't require yeah. a lot of work, right? Because I'm okay. just having five blog posts a week. Like, that's not a lot of. You know, once you have mm-hmm. established writers and stuff, then it's it's really going to be minimal to just you know keep that keep that going. Mm-hmm. Um, but but we'll see. If I mean, if that's successful, I'll up this to the next level and have you know. Eventually, I would like to have two posts a day on Simple Programmer that come out. Um, but uh, but that's you know. First, we start here, get five posts a week, and and see where that goes. But yeah, she she just seems like really awesome. I'm I'm really excited. So. Great. Yeah, I'm really happy that that's working out. <laughs> I'm just yeah. excited to see where it's gonna go. Yeah, it'll it is it's going to be different, right? I mean, to not be totally my 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 stuff on there, and then, um, but but I feel like this is the next logical step for me, just because I want to reach more people. I want to be disconnected a little bit from this too. Right. Um, I feel like I'm gonna try to. I, I keep on still having these fantasies of just dropping and quitting everything. Like I, I <laughs> and, and part of it is just because I've been on this treadmill of content production for such a long time, and I produce yeah. so much content every week. Yeah. Uh, that I need, like, I need to to have some breathing room, and mm-hmm. so this will provide me with the ability, like, I, I kind of want to bring more of the art back into to what I'm doing, so that yeah. it's it's not just a treadmill. So if I have five blog posts that are going out every week, right, um, then I can write a blog post when something really strikes me, and I can spend, I can write these really detailed blog mm-hmm. posts that. You know, so so it's more of because I want to do it rather than I need to get a blog post out every week, which right. you know you got to start off and, and be in that mode I think. But but I'd like to move more to artist, right? That's mm-hmm. that's where I would like to move. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But you got to start out as hustler before you can get to artist. And so yeah, so that's that's the plan. We'll, we'll see what happens, but. Yeah, I think you're. you're it'll be interesting to watch your tra- uh, traffic. <laughs> I think when once that five once those five post a day start dropping it's going to hockey stick well not per day oh per well week. yeah i know but yeah. Per, yeah no yeah. it's going to yeah cuz i mean that's basically like you'll be putting out every month almost what you put out every year well yeah, and here's the other nice thing about this so um oh i just launched simple programmer podcast yesterday sweet mm-hmm. how many episodes just uh there's three out right now three? Um, yeah i saw that congratulations thanks thanks um I, and i haven't I, listened to them so i can't say Oh, you know, you sound great, or somebody else you have reading it sounds great, but or it sounds like you're in a helicopter. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> but um, but but I'm but what will happen content-wise is okay. So if I have five blog posts a week, right, that mm-hmm. are going out, those are written blog posts. Then I'll be putting out um, three YouTube videos on top of that. That'll be transcribed because right now I'm just putting out one because yeah. I don't want to you know, flood it with YouTube videos. Right. So that'll, that'll open up the gates to put out two more. So that'll be three of those. And then I'm planning on putting a short blog post for every podcast episode for Get Up and Code, for Entre Programmers, and for uh, Simple Programmer podcast. But, well, nice. Essentially not the Simple Programmer one just because that's already going out on... It's the same as the YouTube content Yeah. Um, for the most part. But um, but that would bring up the total count to like um, somewhere around like ten pieces of content per per week, which would be pretty awesome, I think. That's pretty insane. Yeah. You definitely need to send emails for every single one of those too. <laughs> be sure you have Drip set up to do that. <laughs> well, it's going to make my RSS feed emails a lot more valuable to people too. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. anything else going on with you, John? The- uh, I guess I should dive into it since we're already. Yeah. Um, so, oh, I finished recording. So, I finished recording the audio version of of Soft Skills in one week. Oh man! <laughs> so, with that, um, were you just doing like just long, one long take, and then you just if you'd stumble, you'd just redo it, or like how? Ah, uh, so, so how I, that process worked. The way I do it is I just assume editors can edit. So, <laughs> you know, since, since that's how <laughs> since that's how I edit my own stuff. So I just I just would would read it and then I would just say like if I mess up if I you know fumble a word um I'll just say uh, uh cut 
and then I'll just retake from wherever, you know, and then cut, you know. And so I, I've, you okay. know, each chapter might have like five or six cuts in there. Okay. So you would cut, like, and then go back to the beginning of the sentence and just yeah, start just over? Yeah, Exactly, back or, or or to where there's a comma, you know, where there anywhere where there's a pause, okay. like so that it's because I don't want to make it excessively hard for an editor to like, right. you know, splice a word in because that's <laughs> you know. plus you, your cadence changes when you say a sentence, like or when you every time there's a pause, there's a cadence change, right? From right. from editing my own stuff for long enough, I know that you know where to where to retake. But um, but yeah, I did that. I was doing like four hours. It's sixteen hours, I think, of oh. of the entire audiobook. Good grief! <laughs> wow, so, somewhere around there. So um, and I added a few like I, I riffs in there. I didn't add as many as I thought I was going to. Mm, where okay. I went off off the off the page and stuff, and I added some books and stuff that. That's you know, cool. That's cool that you did that. I like. I, I've I've had a couple audiobooks where they where people did that, and I thought it was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I figured that would you know. Give some reason for someone to purchase the audiobook too, if they already have the the other book. So um so yeah so I finished that up. The only thing left is I have to. They wanted a couple of videos to go with. Like Manning wants to do like a a V book as well. So I was going to mm-hmm. do videos for each section. Um I had my I had my videographer come like yesterday or the day before, and I shot twenty nine YouTube videos in like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, that- yeah. Any one of those things would be enough to make to make you want to quit the internet and just go live in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I'm not be productive. A big farmer. <laughs> so so, um, so yeah. those those are uh, th- those are going to be ready for for when I'm I'm traveling. But I didn't have them do the the Manning videos. I'm going to have to record those myself with with my digital camera just because I didn't want to like I don't know how those are going to go and stuff. I didn't want to waste time. Yeah. So, but um, but yeah, so that's, that's you should do them on your iPad, like you were doing this, <laughs> your hostage video. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> the early YouTube stuff. I could, I could do. I don't know. I'll probably just set up like the DSLR today, and then and then get that um, yeah get that set up. But but yeah, so that's um. So were that's... you just recording the that audio then, like where you're sitting right now, like just in your office, or did you? Did yeah. You... I, I since I was gonna do 16 hours, I was like, I'm not gonna try and like put a thing, a blanket over my head, or like set up a you know, <laughs> baffling. I'm like, for the most part, I mean, I'm speaking into a good mic. Yes, you know, someone who's really, really keen on audio will will say, oh, your 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 room, you know, has got an echo, or you know, it's yeah, not the best. It's got a reverb, but I figured it'll, <laughs> it'll be it'll be pretty good. So I think it should definitely be a wool blanket if you do that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Especially if you're wearing a tank top, and be nice and itchy. Yeah, there you go. But uh, but yeah, so that's uh, we'll see what happens with the audio version of that. It's going to be on Audible. That was part of my my deal Sweet. with the publishers. I was like, I'm not doing an audio book if you don't publish. Mm-hmm. They're like, ah, it costs too much. Like, no, it has to go on Audible. <laughs> Good deal. <laughs> yeah. Way to put your foot down. Yeah. Well, because it's just it, it, not worth my time. I mean. Yeah. Because yeah. Like, yeah, they'd sell like twenty copies of it. Yeah, it's just you know, Audible is like has ninety percent of the e of the audiobook share. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, so yeah, so that's so that that went well. Like I said, I launched the SP podcast, um, and the simple program of podcast is basically it's a, it's a couple of things. So the first episode was just me talking about it. But then um, I've got my VA working now, so whenever a YouTube video comes out, he's also going to make a Simple Programmer podcast episode. Okay. Oh, and I got a nice little jingle from this ukulele guy. I uh, liked that. You like that? Cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm, the jury's still out for me, to be honest. I have to I have to listen to it about a half dozen times first to. It just it adds this character, and it's it's so it's so John. <laughs> <laughs> You know me and my crazy jingles, right? So, <laughs> uh, but but uh, you know it's like it's not like the most like you know awesome thing, but it it's something that like when people hear it they'll know, right? Yeah. It's like, that's, yeah. I wanted it to be unique, like so that's <laughs> they'll they'll know and they'll say make it stop. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But then it'll but the, those are the things that get stuck in your head too. So yeah. That's true. Yeah. So so we'll see. Anyway. Um, the podcast will be coming out every time I do a YouTube video. Also, when I do interviews on my YouTube channel, um, and then and then every once in a while, when I feel like there's a topic 
again, going into that artist mode. Um, you know, I never started the Simple Programmer podcast because I didn't want to be on the hook to create weekly videos or weekly podcast episodes because I won't always have some. I'm already doing so much stuff. I don't want to be on the hook for yeah. another thing. But by making it be essentially a mirror of my YouTube channel, it gives me this ability now to create an episode if I want to just create a podcast episode whenever I feel like it. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that would be other the other piece. But I'll be producing like you know just generally from the YouTube channel three episodes a week. Uh, so this will be potentially a good uh, a, a good advertisement uh, you know sponsorship type of uh, of deal as well. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So and and it's just a good way to repurpose content. So so yeah. So that's that's that. And then the last thing that's going on with me is um, I I've got that that contract that client I had negotiated with. Um, I am I'm all set. So I actually ended up raising the price. So I'm charging five thousand dollars a day, and I'm going to go in for three days. So nice. Yeah. Wow. Sweet. Yeah. So that puts pegs your weekly rate at twenty five then. Yeah. Yep. So, so yeah, so that's, and, and it's, uh, you know, I, I still won't, like, it's kind of funny, because I, I still wouldn't want to do that. Like, I'm still a little bit hesitant. I'm like, ah, I don't really feel like doing this next week, mm -hmm. um, which seems kind of weird, but, but, in, but to be honest, like, I, 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 I want to do produce stuff. I don't want to do consulting, so, mm -hmm. but, you know, if that sounds can, really familiar. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, and then next week I will be flying out to uh, to Paris, and uh, and, oh, and yeah, I'm, yeah. The plan is to like cut things down to like try and I mean I'll have my content person, my editor now, mm -hmm. my VAs. Oh, I don't know if you, the other awesome thing my VA did this week is um, if you go to my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. uh, he I was like you know make it look good like the header for the Google Plus and the logo thing. Um, you can see like he's he's made it. He's I don't know. It, it looks I, I like it. I think it looks a lot more professional. So, and I'm gonna have him do the same thing with my Twitter and, and all that. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Awesome. Make it so right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also have a Kanban board for him now. Like I figured out how to manage like the tasks that are non daily. So there's like a virtual assistant board, and then there's like a to do, do today, in progress, ready for review, and done. Oh, that's great! And so I could just drop tasks in there. I told them, you know, the order that I have the tasks in there. That's you know, so I can change the priority. Only pick up one thing in progress at any time, and then when you're done, drop it in, ready for review, and then I'll take a look at it. So nice. Yeah. So nice yeah, so that's flow. that's flown pretty good. But um, yeah, I'm using, I, I'm using Kanban board for my assistant too. Awesome. Actually, moved Mandy over to one too. So. Oh, so how's that going with you? I, I that's that's pretty much it for me, for my week. Oh, I, I yeah, I wasn't trying to take over. I was just coming <laughs> and saying it's working too here, too here. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, so yeah. So uh, the guy from Philippines that I hired, uh, Gerald, he is working out terrific. He's got awesome. pretty much all of the show notes, um, hooked in for the YouTube stuff. I've just been having hand, having him handle the YouTube stuff because I've been out of town and stuff and there was plenty of work for him to do there. So, yeah, so um, all the show notes are pretty much linked in to the descriptions. Um, I have a few, like, minor tweaks that I want him to do and then I'm going to have him go back and put in annotations for all of the um, for all of the links throughout the show. Nice. And, uh, yeah, it's just... It's it's just gonna be awesome. So, um, so yeah. So I've got that going on, and then I'm starting to move him into other areas and start having him take over certain things and certain processes. So, um, it's it's just been super nice uh, to have somebody that can pick up some of that work. Um, one of the things that I've been looking at that's kind of related to the way that I'm working with him. Is I was looking at my bookkeeping, yeah, and um, and now I'm really, I, I'm trying to figure out because I think I, I think I'm doing something wrong. I mean, part of this is getting out of the hole that I got into last November, but um, I, I was looking at my income numbers, and uh, so in May, 
the uh, my gross income so far is thirty three thousand dollars, and in April it's thir it was thirty eight thousand dollars, in March it was twenty one thousand um, dollars, February was twenty eight thousand dollars, and the problem is is I still feel like I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but those are pretty big numbers. You should. Yeah. You should so be, my uh, spend, well. my expenses, you know, uh -huh. this month so far I've spent eighteen grand on, you know, travel, on my assistants, on my subcontract, you know, paying my subcontractors stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So those were gross numbers. Um, you know, last month I spent, you know, fifteen thousand. So you know, the net, my net income last month was twenty two thousand. My net income so far this month is fifteen thousand almost 16,000 and I still feel like I'm struggling so I'm trying to figure out you know where where I'm spending money that I don't need to be spending money <laughs> yeah Does that make sense? well yes and no like um I mean with those sort of big numbers you shouldn't have to be figuring out where you're where you're spending money that you shouldn't be spending money and because for two reasons one it shouldn't yeah, but matter. Is, yeah. <laughs> but why, why do I feel like I'm still struggling if... And two, it should yeah. be obvious. <laughs> right? It's like, stop buying oh, those Gucci purses. Some... Like, yeah. you know, you have one Gucci purse <laughs> is enough. Like, you don't have to have one for every day of the week, right? But I and, like and you them. Can, and, you can, and you can use them more than once, right? You, you know, you don't have to... You know, so just, you don't have yeah. to throw it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that I may need to just have somebody kind of go through this with me and help me figure out what this means. Yeah, so uh, so Chuck, is this like, do you feel like it's business stuff, or is it business or personal that you feel like, like you're struggling? Probably the personal stuff. I mean, we haven't done a budget in a long time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I need to just go through and, and see, okay, because looking at, I mean, so the, the net income numbers, some of those... I mean, some of that includes payments to like my American, my business American Express card and stuff, because mm -hmm. the net income is basically anything that's not deductible, non-deductible right. expenses, right? Okay. And then money I didn't spend is the other thing, um, and so you know that net income for May is actually closer to eight grand, not sixteen grand, but you know still it feels a little bit like okay, why you know why am I still worried about money if I can you know if I'm getting to that place where I can, you know, I can bring in, you know, twenty or thirty thousand dollars, and you know, yeah. Well, here's a question for you then. Like, what? Why do you say that you feel like it's tight or whatever? Like, do you, do you feel like like you when you're are you balancing your checkbook and you're like, man, there's uh, we gotta wait till more money comes in or like, mm -hmm. yeah, pretty much. So. Um, you know, we're pretty much out of the hole on the stuff that we were in the hole in in November, December yeah. at this point. Um, and I, I think some of that's just emotional carryover from that because we've been kind of beat down on that for so long. Um, but at the same time, I mean, it's just, it seems like there's always something, right? So I've, I've still got to pay my taxes and I've still got to, you know, pay for, you know, some of this other stuff. I've got a few more debts I want to just get rid of. and Right. Well, if you're living off, like if you're living off eight thousand dollars, essentially when when the it all shakes out, like that's not, I mean, that's mm -hmm. gonna be a little tight. Yeah. So no. I could, no. Well, <laughs> it, no, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Okay. Right, yeah. but but it, it really but I mean, should like. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I mean, for me, so for me, like before taxes, I need anywhere from six to seven. To have to feel to feel like I mean I could I could get that I you know I could do the Mr. Money Mustache thing and and you know like yeah. but you know if I want to if I want to do things like have somebody do the lawn and you know have a decent health health insurance plan and all that stuff for me like I've I've done the math and it's about six to seven grand and we don't have any debt other than our mortgage so if you've got any debt at all then that that can that really starts to pile on pretty quick that could yeah. be yeah. I think the other thing that, that kind of hits is that um, with this pregnancy, my wife has been really kind of, um, well, she's been pretty tired, and she just hasn't been able to do as much. Mm -hmm. And so we've been eating out more and things like mm -hmm. that just because it's it's like, hey, I don't have time to make dinner. You know, you're exhausted, so pizza, you know. 
and things like that. And so just trying to and, – and I don't have the energy to sit down and plan things out so that it's like, okay, so what are we going to have for dinner tonight? Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of done, you know. Yeah. So. To, cl- to clarify what I was saying, John, I think what I'm saying is that eight, with eight grand, if you're living off of eight grand and you're not careful – that will yes. get a, get a, away from you really fast. And, and we aren't no. being as careful. Are you are you saving though? Like I mean, like okay. So if you're just talking about living off of eight grand, right? Mm-hmm. Not talking about saving. Not talking about you know any any putting away money for four one k or any of that stuff, right? Then that should be like you should not have to balance a checkbook. Like you should be pretty dang comfortable. Like in a yeah, you know okay. I mean like. I'm assuming like your mortgage, like like housing expenses, let's say two thousand dollars a month. Like let's say food expenses, even eating out is two thousand dollars a month. Like that's that's like full mm-hmm. on eating out, right? And then you're, you're talking like you know like auxiliary expenses of like you know people maid service and lawn mowing and all that. A thousand bucks a month. I mean you're at five there, right? And then, yeah, the insurance is about twelve hundred dollars a month. Yeah, so so that's like now six, yeah. and those are pretty big buffers that I put into those those things. So like you should have a pretty yeah. clear, like it's pretty hard to like. That's why that you gotta knock off the Gucci purse habit because <laughs> that. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, think, I, I think you might be just feeling poor. Yeah, I think that's really what it is. I mean, yeah. when I really think about it, it's like. You know, it's like okay, well, last month, you know, we got caught up on all these things, and we paid off a couple of. Mm-hmm. Major debts that we had, and so I, I think that's I think that's definitely part of it. Yeah, and and one thing you could do is a reverse budget, like uh, just pull out money, like instead of because budgeting, because I don't know when you're making the kind of money that 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 you're making, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me to penny pinch and to mm-hmm. budget yeah. and to like it, to to put a lot of effort. I mean, like I said, if if there's something it should be obvious, like where the money is going. Like, mm-hmm. if there's something that you need to cut, it should be like, man, that that lawn guy. I don't understand why he charges three hundred dollars a week to mow my lawn. Like, that just doesn't make sense. I feel like where all the money is going to the lawn guy. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like that. That would like it should stick out like that. Um, otherwise, uh, you, what you could do is you could just pull out. You could say like, look, here's the thing. Um, we need like here's more than money than we. We definitely need in a month to live off of seven thousand dollars. So every month I'm going to pull out seven thousand dollars, and bam, this goes into a separate checking account, and that's what we have. And when that's gone, that's gone, right? And um, and then and then, but that should give you enough buffer. So then you're like you're kind of separating the money out so that you probably have like a few thousand dollars at least that are left over that you didn't pull out that are still in the business account. So that start starting to grow. Yeah. You know, something yeah. like that is 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 what would make a lot more sense to me than to try to. Because if you yeah. Yeah. if you go through your whole list and you're like, man, I just I, now I'm saving five hundred dollars a month. Well, big deal. Yeah. That's not going to matter. That's pretty. That's pretty close to what we do. Like we, what mm-hmm. I what I did was I went through one time, and I did I kind of calculated. I looked at all of our expenses for like six months or a year, and I said, okay, nine hundred bucks a paycheck. Is going to go into this into our joint checking fund, and that's kind of like groceries and just miscellaneous stuff. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you know, then we've got some other accounts that stuff goes into, and that's pretty much it. Like if we have to pull money out of our, you know, what I call it the income folder, like kind of where where the money goes into. If we have to pull money out of there, then there better be a pretty good reason. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because because it's pretty weak, and like I don't have to. It's nice. I don't have to think about it. Like I just. I'll order something for twenty dollars on Amazon, you know, some tool or something. Yep. I don't have to think about it, and I know like that nine hundred dollars is just kind of averages out, and it, it just works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely, I, I definitely see this, and I, yeah, I think mostly it's just that we've been fighting it for so long, and yeah, you know, yeah. it's like it's like yeah, there's still stuff to pay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, well, how much but, yeah. how much debt do you have left at this point? Um, I need to go and. Get my taxes filed, and we actually need to pay our taxes from last year too, because we kept putting that off and then went in the hole. Um, but yeah, besides, pretty patient about that, right? <laughs> actually, mostly yes, until okay. until you pop up on their radar, and then they start okay. sending you letters. And I haven't been getting letters, so 
they like to get their interest. They're they're happy to loan you money. <laughs> yeah. They're essentially giving you a loan. They're happy to do that. Well, and I'm I'm happy to have them as a lender at this point until I can get around to them, yeah. um, or until they start being mean. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so besides that, um, I think we owe about ten thousand dollars in other debt. Hmm. So it's not it's not horrible, but yeah. it's not exactly you know what kind of progress. Away. What kind of progress have you been making month to month? Like, so last month we actually paid off about. Um, so so we paid off. I think between the two uh, debts, we owed them like seven grand. Okay, that's respectable. <laughs> um, one of them we at, we settled with them, so we didn't pay them okay. the full amount. But you know, we were far enough behind to where they were like, "Yeah, we'll take what we can get." Mm-hmm. Um, what was that? <laughs> we have a stupid. We have this alarm system. It, we, we the house that we are in have has a burglar alarm. Oh. We've never actually used it as a burglar alarm, but it has. <laughs> Chimes on each door, and it's Same. nice because it, yeah, if the kids like decide that they're gonna run outside or something, we we'll, we'll, we'll get a warning. That's funny. I have the same thing. I bought this house. It's got the the yeah. thing, the chime. Here's what you know what happens though. The the battery dies in that stupid thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then and then the and then it just starts beeping in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh, I just I just pulled out the battery and threw it away. <laughs> But anyway, um, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, but, so that's that's where your money went. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. you're feeling because you're paying off debt. Like once yeah. you get through this, once you pay off that extra ten grand and yeah. pay the IRS, um, then I think you'll then then you'll probably start to feel a little yeah. more. If, then if you, you feel could, a little more rich. If you could put three to five grand in the bank every month, that will start to add up really fast. That's yeah. true, but at this point, I'm pretty driven to pay off the debt. Yeah, well, no, no, no. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Once, yeah, once you're done yeah. doing that, you know, you're gonna have that money to do, to just yeah. sock away. Yeah. So. Yeah, I have a feeling that this month we're probably going to pay off another five to six grand on okay. some of this stuff. Well, so. I, I'm yeah. not gonna bust your chops about that. But, <laughs> but, no, no, yeah, it's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. But, but you know, you go through that, and then it's, you know, it's like, oh, I need something, and then the bank account is really low. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think that's good, though. I think that means that you're. I think it means you're doing it right, honestly, because yeah. you're, you know, yeah. you're 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 stretching a little bit to get the debt paid off, and that's what you should be doing. Exactly. Yeah, I'm stretching a lot of it's bit. Good pain. <laughs> it's good pain. <laughs> yep. And that'll be awesome, though. Hey, pretty soon, like we're hitting all these milestones. Yeah. Uh, now we're we're all unemployed, and, uh, <laughs> and, and and once you get this debt paid off, then we'll all be debt free too. Yeah. Yeah. It's. You know, it's pretty crazy, too, when I really think about it, because um, what's been allowing me to pay off the debt is that I am... So, back in September, I did the whole year-long sponsorship thing, yep. and now I'm starting to get the sponsorship payments again, and, um, yeah, that's what I've been using to pay off that debt. Mm-hmm. And it's it's been really, really nice to be able to just, okay, you know, I've got some room. And, yeah, I, I sat on, after listening to Jesse Meekham's talk at... Uh, uh, Oh, Microsoft. Yeah. Um, I sat on a little bit more money in my business than I normally do. Yeah. Yep. And yep. you know, and that's been nice too because okay. then I don't have to worry about how am I going to pay this or yeah how I'm pay this. Yep. You know, it's, it's like I'm feeling broke again. It's about time to pay somebody, and I go look, and nope, I don't have to pay anybody till next week. You know? <laughs> and so it's like okay, um, yeah. Yeah, so. you know, there, there's something to be said. Like, I can't tell. Like, it even you know, no matter what your financial situation is, there's something to be said for having enough of a buffer of money, mm-hmm. like a reserve, that yeah. you eliminate all the overhead involved with balancing checkbooks, with wondering mm-hmm. where you're going to get money from, with with trying to clip coupons, and all, because all that is wasted, wasted time and stress. And so, like, just having a buffer, like, and anyone can do it, right? It's like anyone can have a six-week buffer, like, right? Because, because it it's it doesn't matter how much money you make, right? If you whatever it is, like, whatever income level you're at, you know, six weeks for you is a, is on a scale. So, yeah, like, there's definitely some benefit, like you're saying, with you do with your business. But I mean, I, I remember, you know, back in the days when I used to balance a checkbook and stuff, and then to now where I have like just like big buffers where it's like, okay, I don't even worry about all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's just a lot of mental stress off of you and yeah. 
in a lot of time. Like you realize how much time you waste, like you know, thinking oh, yeah. about this stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, just panicking over this stuff. Yeah, especially when you play play that bill like that that when's this bill do game? Yeah. yeah. Or when's that, this bill gonna hit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've that's, I've been playing that for a while. Yeah, that's awful. I I was. Uh, yeah, for a while there, I was taking all the money out of my business account. Whenever, like once a month or so, I would just take out like you know several grand, and then I then I'd be like, oh, when's my drip bill gonna hit? You know, because it's like yeah. almost five hundred dollars, and like, and then I'm like, wait, what am I doing? Like, I shouldn't I shouldn't Keep have to worry about this. So yeah. I just yeah. left it all in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and the thing is, is I'm not making money off of Rails clips yet, and I'm not making money off of some of the other things that have become very apparent that I need to be doing yet. And so I can really see that those avenues of income can also, you know, add to this and grow this and, you know, give me even more room on my budget. And and so really it just comes down to getting the work done. Yeah. You know, I, keep, I keep hitting snags with Rails Clips, and maybe we can talk about that in a minute, but, I mean, just realizing that I have these other ways of, you know, getting things to line up and it's just a matter of getting the work done, you know. And then, then talking this through with you guys, and you guys telling me, "Yeah, you're not, you're not busted yet." Um, <laughs> it's just, you know. But y- y- you get that bill, and it's just like, oh, you know. Yeah. And 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 so yeah, I feel poor because I, you know, I didn't. I don't. I you don't, don't feel have bad. a lot of slack, and that's what makes you yeah. feel poor. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, that's what I've been feeling with my just time, right? Like. Because I don't, I just don't. I've realized I don't have any slack to do s- silly administrative stuff. Yeah. And you know, you feel time poor when you do that, and that slack is really important. Yeah, I've been feeling that too. That's why I hired somebody to help me mm-hmm. with that. Um. So I mean, yeah, it's it's the same kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just... totally the right move for you, even though you're mm-hmm. still paying off all this debt. That's yeah. totally the right move because you're probably. Yeah you know, 500 bucks a month or 800 bucks a month, then you've got a lot more time that you, you can earn that money back in a couple of hours, so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, just think, like, in a year from now, you'll have all that debt paid off, hopefully, and then you'll have a nice little bit of a reserve buffer, so yeah. then you won't mm-hmm. feel, like, the stretch. But it's good that you're taking the stretch. I think, you know, I agree with Josh that to pay off the debt that makes mm-hmm. you feel a little uncomfortable because... And once you get there, then you'll have breathing room. Like you got to get that oh, debt yeah. paid off, and that's that's yeah. the key. Yeah. So, Chuck, have, have you been uh, have you been down this path before with the paying off debt and and getting back into it, or is this your no. first time? Okay. No, we uh, we bought the Dave Ramsey uh, Financial Peace Finance. University yeah. at home package. Mm-hmm. So we didn't actually ever go to the class. It comes okay. with a voucher for the class if you want to go. But uh, anyway, so we watched a bunch of the videos and we started doing all of the stuff that he recommended that you do and then um, life happened and we got off track with yeah. that. But at this point, it's it's so much... I mean, when we're talking about budgeting every week, it's not a ton of time, right? It's a half hour or so. Right. But but Heather and I are so busy that it just... Yeah. You know, just the, the idea of trying to take well, the time, and then there's all the emotional garbage around it. And, right. Yeah. It's more than a half hour, though. It's it's a half hour to do the plan, and then, like, yeah. more time to follow the plan. Yes, yes. So it, And there's points where it makes sense. Like, this is, like, this is a thing that, like, most people don't understand. Yeah. Is that, okay, like, I slept on a mattress on the floor before. Right, mm-hmm. I, I pinched pennies before. When you're first starting out, when you're when when like um it, when you don't have a lot of an empire and and, and you're mm-hmm. you're making a little bit of ma- amount of money, like if you can save yourself five hundred dollars a month and you can take that money and you can invest that money and you can right and you're yeah you're early on, right. that's totally worth doing. But but as you get to a certain point, it's like then then. It's it's not worth doing that anymore, and then it's yeah. not worth like then it's like no, just like go and eat out if you need to go eat. Like who cares? Mm-hmm. What what does it matter if you're going to save if it's going to cost you an extra five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars a month to to eat out? Like it's like it just depends yeah. on where you are. You know, what I mean, if you're making sixty thousand dollars a year and that's your family's income, then you want to be really careful about right. you know these these things and, and saving that money. 
because you can invest it is is going to be huge because that's going to make a huge huge difference in your life mm -hmm. you know, down that road. But but as you get to certain points, then it's like yeah, you got to stop. So so it's kind of weird because it's like you give kind of different advice. Like like the advice that you know I think a lot of people don't realize is that the advice is dynamic based on where you are. Like you know on on oh, what. Yeah. 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 Well, it'll cost it'll cost any family my size the same amount to eat out every night. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. But if their income is half of what my income is, then that's that's twice the amount of their world that they're spending on that. Yeah. So I may be able to afford it, but they may not. Exactly. Yep. And so you know, am I am I stressing myself out over something that, in the grand scheme of things, really isn't going to affect me? Exactly. See, that's the thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it, it's kind of weird. Like I, I've gotten to these because I still kind of have that mindset from from when I had to pinch the pin. Like, yeah. and I, I was trying to make it and like investing in real estate mm -hmm. when I was paying money out of my pocket every month and like every every cent counted. And and so now I'm like, okay. So th sometimes I have to like look at things and be like, okay, if I did s something and it ends up costing me an extra, let's say twenty thousand dollars this year. Big deal. That's like in the scheme of things of of the money that I'm making. Yeah. That doesn't even matter. Like that's it's like so like so inconsequential. Like screw it. It doesn't matter. So right. you know. So it, that's it, yeah. You know. It boils down to okay. Well, what else am I doing, and is it going to affect my ability to go to Paris, or right. is it going to affect my ability right. to you know, which aren't these big life altering decisions. You just put it off for a month or don't go. Right. You know, it's not, am I going to be able to eat or pay my bills next month, which is a little bit more critical and stressful. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm reading you. I feel a lot better now. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for talking okay. me off the ledge. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, just not, you know, just watch out the Gucci. That's it. <laughs> John, you keep bringing that up. I, I I suspect this might be something you're dealing with in your personal life. <laughs> we should probably delve into that off the air, maybe. Uh, he loves his Gucci purses. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Now I'm gonna get me my Apple Watch. That's the. Yeah. Yeah. John's a handbag whore. We know it. I decided I'm gonna get the, and I can't even get it yet. It pisses me off. I'm I'm getting the the most expensive of the midline watches because that's the one that I like. Oh wait, you are, are actually getting an Apple Watch. Oh yeah, I'll, I'm definitely oh. an Apple Watch. Oh my gosh! Yeah, okay. that's an easy purchase for me. That's like a no-brainer for me. Well, um, well, I guess if you're, yeah, I guess if you're running and stuff a lot, that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, just just for yeah. the running alone, it, it makes sense. For me. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing varied reviews though on how accurate it is with your fitness tracking and stuff. So I'd be interested to see how that works out. For me, as long as it tracks the distance, and I mean, I'd like to get the heart rate benefits and all that, but but as long as it tracks the distance and I can play my Audible books on there, mm. then then I'm good because I just don't like carrying around the phone. It's a liability every you, time. I you have to carry the phone. The phone. No, we, we talked about this. No, John's. I, I have several friends that have them now, and oh. to to have the content, you have to have your phone with you. To have the Audible, I think you can download yes. the Audible content and not then on your watch. There's there's no storage on the watch, not like that. Oh, I'm gonna have to look into this. Yeah. If that doesn't work, then that's just dumb. <laughs> then, then, I'm just, then I'm just gonna get a a a, an, a, a Walkman. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna get a Walkman. A cassette player. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, we can't go. We can't downgrade from technology. Like a, a, a cassette player and headphones cannot be superior to an Apple Watch. This doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if you if if it's a Walkman, I mean, you still have the same bulk or maybe a little less with your iPhone, right? So. Well, the yeah. problem is like the iPhone. I've got an iPhone six plus. Pulling that out of your pocket while you're running to like you know check yeah. distance. Yeah. Like every time that's a liability because that thing is going to yeah. eventually drop out of your hands and break. So, yeah. I just strap mine to my arm. But yeah. Yeah. But then it is a watch. Then it's an Apple Watch. Then you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can control your phone from your watch, and you can see what you're doing from your watch. Yeah. So so you can. Put you have your phone on in your pocket or you know uh, okay so that clipped, would work. clipped on to you but yeah and and then you have the interface on your wrist yeah and and that's the draw right is right. Um, if I'm not in a position where it's convenient for me to pull out my phone I have another way of interacting with it that's nice mm -hmm. but 
Yeah, it's funny because some people are like, you're too lazy to pull out your phone. And I'm like, if my phone's in my pocket and I'm driving and I get a phone call, I want to be able to just see who it is without, you know, and still holding the steering wheel and moving all over the place. And <laughs> well, 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 let's just do some very, very simple math here, right? Okay, so if not having to pull my phone out of my pocket saves me two minutes a day. I already hate this argument. <laughs> two minutes a day. Right, I think that's a pretty conservative estimate. Two minutes a day, 365 days a year. Right, we're looking at like just let's do some rough numbers and be real conservative and say like uh, that it's going to save you like you know let's say it's going to save you 700 minutes a year. Okay, so 700 minutes a year. How quickly does that that iWatch pay for itself? Yeah, but how? So so this is why I hate this argument. Is that what are you legitimately <laughs> going to do in two minutes? Answer an email. No, well, every day. If it's going to take you time, two minutes to actually, I'm just talking about the physical uh, process of pulling something out of your pocket. I know, but that that doesn't translate into that time being productive time. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, you, know. you need what you need to do is you need to, to every time you pull your phone, you you would have pulled your phone out of your pocket. Make sure you log. Three seconds of productive time doing something. Well, you're using the phone for three seconds more because you're not fumbling in your pocket, right? I know, but if I'm walking through the mall with my wife, then pulling it out of my pocket doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't save it's you not, any time. It's not going to save me Damn time. It. That I'm I, want, I want to watch. I'm getting out of watch. Okay, okay this, is great. this is great. Yes, this is, how, this is how we all are, and no one likes to admit it. But, yeah, it's the emotional, you know, it's like... I, I thought about it. I bought a Pebble Time because I freaking want a watch. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't buy it because it was going to save me time. I bought it because I have some pet peeves with my phone, and sometimes I just don't want to pull the stupid thing out. There we go. That's it. You know, but I, I have no illusions it's going to make me any more well, efficient. And John, from what I've read about the from what I've read about the watch too, um, you have to babysit the thing. Um, like every time you install a new app, I'm, this could be wrong, but I think every time you install an app on your phone, you've got to micromanage the notifications. notifications yeah. And so the, otherwise, you're going to get notifications constantly, and yeah. so it becomes this ongoing chore of like disabling, you know. That Making sure you've know. got the, the notifications tweaked, and this was I, I, this was on an inner review that I was reading. Yeah. That, but so. if if the if the iPhone app has a watch app, then it'll automatically install the watch app to your phone or to your watch, which is nice. So you get the interactivity if they've built it. But yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you're right about that, Josh. I think honestly, uh, the second or third gen. Uh, iWatch with iOS 9 or 10, I think that's where the we're really going to see the sweet spot with it. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so next week I'm going to be doing Rails Clips. The, I, I keep having all these challenges. I sent the email to you guys um, about switching to WordPress or not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, is that I've got things so close on dev chat, and there are so many advantages to having it on dev chat that I think I'm just going to leave it there. But, you know, I, I keep having things come up, like I went to Atlanta this week instead of recording videos. Um, and then, you know, I, I had a meeting last night for Cub Scouts. Uh, it's the end of school, so I'm going to at least two or three things over the next week for, you know, school, at the school, you know, dance festivals or uh, talent shows or there's something else that I can't remember. I was at a kindergarten graduation yesterday morning, and so it's it's just been it's been really hard to find the time. And so I think pretty much what I'm going to do is, unless it's something that is going to make me at least two grand um, by answering the email or whatever, I'm pretty much just going to ignore everything except the <laughs> podcast next week and then just. Uh, just get those videos done, yeah, and I'd like yeah. to get to the point where I have a month's worth in the in the can, so that I can go back to Atlanta for this training, and not worry about it until I come back. And then it's like, okay, this isn't critical, urgent, but you know, I only have two weeks to figure this out, so I got to get more stuff in. So I can help you out with this one because I, I I struggle with this, and I I have a real good system. Like, how did I record that entire audio book in a week? 
because mm -hmm. I, I know I need to do it, right? So right. Um, it's actually kind of interesting. Like um, I, I had never heard someone describe it, but now I've heard someone describe it three times this week, uh, it, which is this this analogy. I mean, I've heard this analogy before, but I didn't hear it applied. But um, you know, you, have you ever seen that thing where you know you put put the the rocks, they put mm -hmm. the rocks and the pebbles, yeah. and the sand yeah, in the water, the right? Cubby. Yeah. Thing. Then exactly. you put the sand in, and then you put the water in. Yep. Exactly. So it's just this idea of picking out the big rocks. And so, like, on my Kanban board, like, for this last week, because whenever I have a big project like this, and I'm like, I need to get this thing done, I just, the very first thing that went on my board was um, was record, like, eight chapters of the book. And every day, the very first thing I did was get the eight chapters done. And I had it, so I had it divided up. So I knew it was going to take me exactly a week, like a week and a day, mm -hmm. because I had those chapters. And every, and every day, the very first thing I did was do that, because those are my big rocks. Yep. And then I went and then did the other things that I needed to do for the week. And then I left the rest of the stuff. And then somehow, you know, the thing, like the world didn't end. Those right. other things got filled in. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I always, like if I start the day with email or some crap like that, yeah. that's like it's that's the water and the sand. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, just like for these rail clips, I would just totally like come up with the quota that you're gonna do every single day or whatever it is, you know, right. certain days and week, and put that on your schedule and just be like, I'm even if you book the time on the calendar, like I'm spending this time, this day, and that's the first thing I'm working on before I work on anything else, and and you'll get that like you'll get that done. Hey, what's up? John Sanmez here. Just want to take a second to thank one of the sponsors for this episode of Entre Programmers, DigitalOcean. So I've talked about DigitalOcean a lot before on the show, and that's because they're just such an awesome company. I use them to host all of my websites, basically simpleprogrammer.com, which gets around 200,000 200, page views a month, runs on there, super smooth, get up and code runs on there. The Entre Programmers podcast that you're listening to right now, we use DigitalOcean for that. I use it for just about everything and it's, it's such a good deal you know for, as far as hosting goes right if you're going to run your own Linux server and do your own web hosting at five dollars a month which is the starting plan for DigitalOcean you just really can't beat that it's it's crazy and when you do need something super powerful uh, DigitalOcean comes through for you as well and it's so easy to scale up to that I started out on simple programmer with a ten dollar a month box and I was even able with that to get a hundred thousand page views a month without much of a problem but when I wanted to scale up all I had to do was bring the server down, expand the size, go up to the, the higher size droplet, and bam, I was uh, was up there, and I've expanded it a couple of times since then. So uh, DigitalOcean, definitely awesome company. I would definitely recommend that you check it out if you have any any idea of, of creating a website online or you want to have your own Linux server to be able to do whatever it is that you want to do some development or put out a production app just a ton of great things that you can do with DigitalOcean go to DigitalOcean.com and use the code onto programmers to get $10 credit so DigitalOcean.com onto programmers is your code and you get $10 credit good for basically two months at, at a $5 box so you can check it out this episode of the Entre Programmers is brought to you by Raygun.io. Blast away the errors in your application before anybody even knows that your application has errors. It's an amazing system that allows you to find and fix bugs before your users even know that they have bugs. You can save time and money. And believe me, development time is expensive. It takes a lot of time and effort to track down these horrible bugs in production, but Raygun can help you find and fix these things faster by giving you complete stack traces of where these errors are happening and logging them for you so that you don't have to hunt them down and track them down and deal with all of the horrible mess of finding and debugging that you typically have to go through as a developer. This is full stack monitoring that allows you to monitor errors across your entire application from the front end in the browser to mobile applications to the back end with Node.js or .NET or whatever it is that you're doing. You're going to have extremely reliable error tracking in your application in no time at all. So head over to raygun.io and get started today to put some real error tracking in your application and start hunting down these bugs that you don't even know your users are running into and you'll be better off for it. It's a product and service that I've been using for almost two years inside of Signal Leaf and I really can't live without it. It's helped me so many times and I've had such great results with it. I highly recommend you check out raygun.io today. I like it. Yeah, that's pretty similar to what I'm planning to do. Um, 
So I, 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 I will have to see how it goes next week. It'll be, next week's going to be interesting um, for me. Cause, so I, but what I'm planning to do is basically shut off everything, um, start work at like 7 probably, shut off everything, uh, Skype. Um, I'll probably bounce in and out of my email a couple times, but turn on, you know, close out Slack. Anything that where people could reach me basically is going to go away. Yeah. Until I'm done, I'm going to put in four to six hours of writing time for client work, and then the world can have their shot at me. So. Yep. Otherwise, like it's it's just too easy with writing, especially for me. It's like I mean, for anybody, it's like writing's never like it's always hard to get started. It's never, right. no matter right. how much you do it, it never is like you know, I can't wait to get... There's a few people that are like, I can't wait to write, but for most people, getting started is pretty tricky, and uh, easy, it's really easy to procrastinate, so... Yep. The, yeah. The interesting thing about writing, too, is that I've discovered is writing replies to emails, uh, it, it it requires the same amount of effort and mental focus and drains you the same amount mm -hmm. as writing a blog post or writing something of value, uh, and so, like, it, it's so write the blog post and send them a link. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, well, what I'm saying is that like if you if you answer your emails for like if you don't like if you don't set aside those like the big rock thing like and, and do your writing first and you, and uh, and you answer let's say you answer emails first right then you write some really awesome emails to people <laughs> right um, but then and then your writing suffers right um, yep whereas if you flip it like your writing is good like the blog post you're writing or whatever it is and then when you answer people emails oh well sure you you're drained and you're you're right but you get through it and it doesn't matter because your your thoughts your communication doesn't have to be as clear like it doesn't have to be a piece of art when you answer someone's email but like you know what I mean? Like you, you're, you yeah. will first use up that. So, so you, you only have a limited yeah. supply. So, pick what you're going to use your creative, your creativity, mm -hmm. and your focus on mm -hmm. instead of like you know. So the the ordering and that you know that's something I've been learning is that this the ordering of things matters a huge, huge yeah. degree. Yep. And I find too, like if I if I don't hit the big thing first, I get really, really tense. I get tenser and tenser inside yeah. as the day goes on, and like you know, I'm like. An hour in, and I'm like still answering email, and I'm like just you know. And then by the time I I do two or three hours of that, and then I try to do some real work, and it's like, you know, I'm like this stress ball, and it's it's really hard to get 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 into the flow. Right. Yeah. So um. So yeah. So so then your your VA is working out pretty good then, huh, Chuck? Yeah, I just need to find more stuff to throw at him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the um, the YouTube stuff has kept him busy for the last week or so. And we have to. We'll have to do like um like a a, a meetup like a, in the mm -hmm. Philippines, but not but we won't attend. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! It'll just that's, be like VA. That's so awesome! That I feel so much closer to you already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, killer. That'd be funny. It'd be it you know, it'd be awesome. Like once we all once Josh gets his VA and Derek gets his to have an episode <laughs> of Entre Programmers where it's just our VAs talking our outsource, about outsource the outsource. Yeah. Episode. That'd be awesome. <laughs> well I know he has this going on. I don't know. That I could, did this that and this. You know? It's yeah. like they start to compare notes and Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. He's only paying you four hundred dollars? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what about you, Josh? How's it? How's it? Your, your the time is ticking down, but you're yeah, yeah. So the, oh my gosh, this week has been pretty insane. Um, so I've had you know I've got a lot of little details to take care of, like um, for to wrap things up at work, um, transitioning passwords and accounts, and um, you know making sure that I've got everything checked in and and cleaning stuff up, deleting software, all that stuff, and um, getting my equipment back to them. And uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, I've just been like tons and tons of little details. And then um, I've just had all these deadlines kind of come come crashing together, <laughs> because which is what I knew was going to happen, because that's kind of how I engineered it. It was like, okay, I need to hit critical mass, and it's going to suck for like a couple weeks until yeah. I can actually, you know, until I go full time. And um, so, yeah, so like... I ha basically had 
all of my clients pretty much just decided they needed something on Friday, which is today. Um, and so I was just juggling. I was just like bouncing back and forth between. It, 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 it was like at one point I had like two deadlines on Friday. I was like, okay, I can do this. And then somebody else was like, I really need that by Friday. And I was like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> and then another one came in. And I was like, oh boy, because I I note to self, um, most people like to take Memorial Day and other holidays off. Um, so I had one client was like, I was like, I'll get just get this to you on Monday, and uh. he's like. I'm taking Monday off. We need this, but we, and we need to have it done by Tuesday. So I had to get it to him by Friday. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I've got a plan for I've got a plan for holidays. That's, that's something I've got to got to make a note about. Um. But yeah, it's been it's been so. I'm, I'm I think I'm gonna get everything done. <laughs> uh, and oh, so far, yeah, I think I'm going to. Um. So. So far, though, the my clients have been liking what I've been producing for them. So, the um, I did one. So I've got um, the writing coach. He's launching his. He's basically launching his. Um, he's relaunching his writing class with like a master's level, or I'm sorry, not not writing coach. Um, speaking public speaking coach. Yeah, he's relaunching his um, class with with like a six hundred dollar tier and like a sixteen hundred dollar tier. Oh, nice! Wow. Um, yeah, because he had like he had all these lower packages, and then people were buying the the upper one only. <laughs> wow! So he just dropped all the lower ones, and he's added another one that's like more personal access to him and everything. Um, so he's launching. So we're start, we're kicking that off on Tuesday. So I I was hoping to have like all of his emails done and to him on Monday, so he could review them and we could queue everything up. But he's taking Monday off, so. I just got him the first one. I we had a compromise, and I just got him the first email, yeah. and um, he looked at it, and he was pretty, he was pretty happy with it. He had a couple minor tweaks. Um, it was kind of funny because I got to show it to my wife, um, and she's she was a corporate trainer, previously, and oh, okay. so she um, she read it and she's like, she actually was getting interested and started asking me questions about the course. So I was like, yes, <laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs> Um, yeah, like actually caught her interest. She wasn't just, she wasn't just like reading and going, oh, that's nice, you know, because I wrote it. It was actually like piqued her interest. Um, so it's it was really fun though, because so this guy, um, he speaks. He's like an inspirational type speaker, and he speaks to students. And so I got, I told the story. The, the first email, basically, just like trying to get people to buy into his lifestyle and like the dream of of achieving his lifestyle. And um, so he kind of, you know, he jets around the country and um, makes, you know, makes six figures just speaking, basically. And um, so I told a, a story about him uh, going and speaking at some, some, like a poor school in Oklahoma and just how touched the kids were by his story and everything. So it was, it was, it was really cool. It was like I was able to really push, push the emotional, the right emotional buttons, I think, in that that email so I'm looking forward to seeing how it does the um the interesting thing with this one is I realized that I'm I'm actually not going to be able to claim I don't know what I'll be able to claim about results out of this because I'm writing the four emails that lead up to the sale and then he's writing like all of the actual launch emails himself so like my e my last email will be the one from the day before he actually goes live so I'm going to have to come up with a way that I can present like whatever happens as a result in a way that you know is useful for me as a case study yeah yeah because yeah, you can't he, claim it, the results yeah yeah there won't be any like actual purchases happening from my emails I was like oh that's kind of a bummer <laughs> Um, yeah, but you can say that you took part in it. And yeah. Then people ask you can say well this is what I did yeah uh, you yeah. may also be able to uh, just uh, what am I trying to say? You're basically, you can measure up to the point that you're involved, right? Right, yeah. And so, you know, it's like, look, you know, we had these kinds of results through the emails that I wrote, and then he, you know, it primed him for this kind of response on the things that he did. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I'm thinking of, like, I'm hoping the first, if the first day goes really well, which they typically do on these launches, then... I can kind of take some take a lot of credit for that because that first email he sends will probably just be like 
come and get it type of deal. So that'll be some some measure of the results. Um, uh, so so yeah. Um, and then the uh, I sent I sent over um, some emails to my running coach client, and he was very happy with them. Um, man, he's diagramming out his sales funnel, and it is it is crazy. <laughs> it oh, makes yeah. anything <laughs> we've put together look look r like child's play. I mean. He's got this. He's got like this great big Visio diagram, and this is just like he's just getting started, because um, he's got you know, he's got upsells. All his all his products are going to have upsells. It's going to be the seven dollar seven dollar uh, tripwire, and then two hundred dollar upsell kind of thing. And he's got he's got a bunch of parallel offers, and it's just it's insane. But he's going to need a lot of emails, so I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's not going to be hard to transition him to a retainer here pretty soon. That'll be good. That'll be a good learning experience too for you to mm -hmm. see how he's doing this funnel and what's oh, working yeah. and stuff. So yeah, and he shared, he's given me access to the um, he bought the machine that Ryan Dice product, you know, yeah. marketing product, and he's given me access to that. So I'm like eating that up, going through the whole thing, and uh, I'm really I'm gonna try to put in. My goal is to try to put in like a half an hour to an hour a day. Of like study, yeah. I wanna, I wanna be. That's like one of the things. The two things that I really wanted to be able to do that I ha haven't been able to do very much is, like, block off some time for study, and then block off a nice block of time for actually getting to know the audiences that I'm writing for, because it's just been so frantic with the doing it on, on the side that I felt like I was always. I always felt like I was kind of running on empty. Yeah. And um, I need. It's really easy to write like. A lot of this stuff is really easy for me to write when I'm. I feel like I'm topped off, and I've spent some time, you know, reading the Reddit running forum. If I do that for half an hour, like I'm primed, and I can crank stuff out. But when I'm just always in like deadline mode, it's really, it's hard to stay on top of that. Um, but yeah, so next week I will be. So I'm going to be working through the weekend, pretty trying to trying to get everything done. And then I think next week, early next week or mid mid next week, I should things should start to get more reasonable. Um, my deadlines are going to be deadlines are going to be easing up a little bit, and I think I can do this. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, I'm 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 actually happy with how I'm happy with how productive I am able to be right now. Um, like, I feel like I'll be able to do work like essentially write like four hours a day, if that, and you know easily pay all of our bills mm -hmm. and not have any not have any stress there. And then it's really just a matter of getting better and better clients, because yeah. I'm gonna be it's the same stuff. I mean, I'm gonna put the same amount of work in and write the same stuff, regardless of how much they're paying me. So. Just getting. I've been getting. I've actually been getting a pretty good amount of leads in from just from Twitter, mm -hmm. which is, has surprised me. Um, I've gotten oh. like five. I've gotten like five. Had like five people contacting me this week about copywriting. Wow. Um, either through my website contact form or th directly on Twitter, and I haven't even like. So my, my all my Twitter stuff is still kind of branded as the um, the King Sumo. Like I've been pushing King Sumo on Twitter. And I think I'm going to change that up. And uh, <clears throat> I'm thinking I'm going to go for the email thing. And I'm thinking I'm I'm considering trying to brand myself as the email coach. Yep. And um, because I've been getting I've been getting people asking me to like write. I've been getting a lot of people asking me to write stuff for me that they obviously can't afford to hire me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I think that I could I think I could actually do. Like basically do um, copy reviews and have a pretty nice stream. Like I could charge probably two fifty to five hundred dollars a pop um, and have a nice stream of those coming in as like a not my main source of income, but kind of as a secondary secondary stream. And that gets me exposed to more people's businesses too. I get to like I'm finding that every time I get behind the scenes with a business, it's just like it's amazing how much I'm like leveling up. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm kind of thinking about that as my, like my kind of Twitter, you know, my Twitter branding and my and even my website, and I might do like a bunch of I might just do like on my website just do teardowns like critiques, 
of emails and email funnels and just um, you know kind of like try to figure out who's doing it right and rip apart what they're doing and just talk about it publicly. Not my clients. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Reverse engineer, reverse engineer what other people are doing, and then show what's what's good and bad about it. Mm -hmm. So you're still trying to figure out the content marketing angle that I want to take. But that's kind of what I'm leaning towards right now. Yeah. yeah I mean, the, that, oh, go ahead. The the set price products are really easy to sell because people will mm -hmm. they'll they'll either identify and pay or they won't. Yeah. Yeah, like I had this guy. I had this guy um, email me this week, and he was um, he's in the UK. He's hilarious, um, but he was like he was going on and on about how people in the UK are not are not as enthusiastic as people in the US. <laughs> he was like <laughs> nervous about like trying some of the marketing stuff that he's been reading over there, and just like how are people going to respond to it and stuff. Um, but yeah, he he's got two businesses. That like one of them, he sell like he sells um, outdoor uh, like enclosures for um, like cars. So if you had like a car, you oh, wanted yeah. to exhibit it somewhere, and you use like a glass cube to put it in. Like that's he has a company that like sells these things. It's like how do you market that? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't like I don't he, I don't think he could afford to hire me, but I think I'm I might I might try to sell him like you know I'll hop on Skype with you for an hour. For 250 bucks, and we'll we'll see what we can come up with. And he seemed to really like that idea. So we'll sell those out so freaking fast. Yeah, yeah. Just watch because that like the negotiation of the thing. If it's only going to be an hour, it may cut. It might take you over an hour as mm. well. So then you're True. cutting that rate in half. And then I That's mean, if you point. can turn it into something else, or maybe if you can if you can tell them you'll do three uh, three a minimum of three hour sessions. Right. And, the, and you can space them apart so when he needs help, so he purchases yeah. all three at once, and then you're negotiating one time, and then that cuts yeah. the overhead. That's what uh, Naomi from Itibiz actually just, they just, she just changed her model from like, she was selling hour blocks before, and now you have to buy like 12 mm -hmm. <laughs> at a time or something. It's a pretty, it's a pretty big chunk. At yeah. Once. And, and then just set aside the times that you're willing to do it, mm -hmm. and when, yeah. they're, when they're full, they're full. And that yeah. way you're not spending way too much time on these one-offs that may or may not go anywhere. Yeah. I changed yeah. my coaching, actually. Um, so, in fact, oh, I forgot to mention, at my new my new coaching kind of scheme, uh, or setup, I don't want to call it a scheme. <laughs> <laughs> not a scheme. But um, I, I, um, I got my first client at the new, at this, you know, we're working on on the more the retainer model here, okay. um, and so um so I've got I've got one client now uh, at um at two thousand dollars a month, and that's um and that's like three calls a month, so nice nice uh, yeah. so is, and is that for that's like career development stuff or like what are you what are you I'm curious what you're coaching uh, on topics? any of the any of the topics that like um business and career development mostly but also uh, like things like retirement, you know, um, and even oh, potentially, yeah. like it's pretty open. It it really is life coaching at this at this point. But yeah. you know, it's it's more from my perspective that I'm I'm selling it, you know, from software development perspective and my target audience. But um, but I I, I decided to put it as like flat rate at like five hundred dollars an hour mm -hmm. because that is worth the the overhead. And then, and it's really just an anchor because people aren't going to buy that usually. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. And then the coaching package of five calls for like uh, fifty nine hundred dollars, or the monthly coaching at two thousand a month. Okay. And so I think most people will choose the monthly coaching at two thousand dollars a month, which which is worth it for me. The you know because and I kind of was trying to figure out like after doing this for some because I was doing a lot of hourly ones. Mm -hmm. um, and, and not really doing, I was like, well, what would actually be worth it for these prices? And for the hourly ones, it just, it wasn't worth it for me to hop on a Skype call with someone for $300 for an hour because there was like all this pre stuff. Like we'd, we'd, we'd talk ahead of time or send emails back and forth. And then it was like, and then I had to schedule like just the hit on scheduling that into my day wasn't yeah. worth it for just one hour. So, so yeah, so you know, it's even questionable doing it at the 500, but mm -hmm. that's why I put those other 
things in. So you might want to do something like that. Make a package, make a monthly retainer, uh, yeah. something you know, and, and then put a system around it so that it's easy for people to redeem without the scheduling overhead and crap. Right. That's yeah. True. Buy now button. That's the thing I need to do, Chuck. Is that would that would so help? You get Calendly or something, and then they get special access to those yeah. appointments. But I was thinking about it too, and I'm not even sure. Like I'm, I'm kind of, I'm still putting it as as hands on because, like, even at two thousand dollars a month month for coaching people, um. If I had 10 clients, let's say, so I was making $10,000 a month, I don't think it would be worth the headache, honestly, dealing with 10 different people yeah. on coach. So, so I'm just being really selective. Like I, I'm, I'm filtering people by having saying, okay, have you read my book first? Mm-hmm. Um, uh-huh. Which maybe it's, I don't know. It, but again, I am trying to totally get away from the consulting. So, so people have been asking me for coaching. And and put to put together a page. So so I guess I you know for at this point I'm I'm more like looking at like okay if 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 this is someone who I want to coach and I feel like there's there's some value because I'll be able to like you know use some of that to to develop content from their experiences and, and the things that I'm I'm working with them on then it's worth it. But but when I scale it up, if I said if I had ten clients, I wouldn't take on ten clients at two thousand dollars a month. It yeah. just it wouldn't be worth it. Yeah. So um, one, so my mentor is he's shifted his. Um, so he was trying to sell, co- basically sell copywriting training, um, yeah. the stuff that I went through, and what he was finding is that it's just too difficult. The market was too narrow. Like the number of people that actually want to be copywriters is very small, um, and so what he found is that he's shifted his strategy completely now, and he's he's going for high like high end marketing co- uh, coaching. Yeah, he's selling. and he's—it's kind of like a funnel. Like I will help you, co- you know, fix your funnel type of thing. And he's—I think he's. Um, he we were talking the other day, and he's selling like it's like ten thousand dollars for eight weeks, I think. Oh. Um, and then he, but then the other thing he's doing is he's working on shifting it over to a group model, where you could pay like five thousand dollars for eight weeks, but you're in you're in a group with like ten or twenty other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now it's 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 kind of I mean it's basically a course at that point, um, but it's it's more individualized, more individual time, and then you can actually start to get a decent amount of money out of that effort. Yeah. That might scale. That might scale better for you too. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, like if you look at the thirty by five hundred launches, you know, like Amy Hoy, they they, if you're making like a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars on to launch a course. Or five hundred thousand. I think she, she was making like you know they were clearing like four or five hundred thousand dollars from taking a hundred students. So you know it was a lot. It was a lot of work, but it was a pretty big chunk of money too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes it worth it for sure. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So the other thing I so I've been I've been really digging OmniFocus. I um. And that's I'm actually funny. what's that? I said that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I tried. I haven't. So I I tried it out before, but I wasn't exclusively Mac based. And there's no like Windows version. There's no web accessible version. So it's it's kind of you know pretty painful if you're on Windows at least partly. Um, but yeah, I've been really liking it. And um, I've got John. You m- mentioned the watch, but I've got uh, Siri. I mean, Siri's actually pretty decent. Um, for simple stuff, and you can so yeah. like I was driving, and I always have my head, ear, ear, earphones in when I'm driving, um, and I'll just hit the um, I'll just hit the the talk the push to talk button, and you know if I want to, if I think of something while I'm driving, I'll just hit that, and I can Siri will leave, make me a reminder, and it'll get sucked into mm-hmm. OmniFocus automatically. Yeah, nice. that I I used that when I was using OmniFocus, that and that just one yeah very helpful thing. Yeah, it's really it, it. It actually, I'm actually thinking about going back to GTD now that I have this because um, all it fixes most of the stuff that I didn't like about GTD, which was that things just get really overwhelming after a while. Like you build up all this stuff that you want to do, and it just gets really overwhelming, and you're you're never able to like review it all, and it just becomes a mess, and like mm-hmm. stuff goes in and you never see it again, and you don't know what happened, and just, it all falls apart. But with OmniFocus, you can 
you can set stuff up so that it'll pop up automatically for you to review every so often. So like if there's some project that I know I'm going to do, like I want to get with my insurance agent and go through all of my insurance yeah. um, and make sure like, oh yeah, if I get crippled or something, that my disability insurance will actually pay for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I didn't just buy some crappy disability insurance or something. So I want to do that with my insurance agent but not till not till things settle down. So I've got a project and I've set a defer until date and I don't have to ever look at it until that date comes around. Then it'll just pop into my pop onto my radar. Um, and and then like it, you can have you can have projects kind of um, you can have a like a, just a review cycle on a project. So like if it's something that you only want to think about like once every three months just to kind of you know so keep it keep it moving. Um, you can hide it, and then it'll just pop pop back up into your review yeah. every week. Every you know when it's when it's time to do that. So I don't know. I'm gonna give it a try. I definitely have at this point. I have a lot more overhead than I usually do, um, and just a lot more details to manage. So I think GTD would actually be useful for me again. Um, and uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I I I think I'm I'll be. I think I'll be better about avoiding the trap, which is the I'm just going to do all this really easy, fun stuff so I can check stuff off. Yeah. And feel productive. Yep. And at the end of the day, I've earned no money. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think that's not really a flaw in GTD. Um, it's a it's a flaw in it's just it's just a human nature issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, really, the point of GTD is getting getting supposed to be getting all that stuff down in front of you so that you can make intelligent decisions about what to work on and what not to, but people forget that last part. And they just, they don't ever make the decisions, they just record it and then they do it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of value in getting the thoughts out of your head so that you yeah. know that they're captured. Yeah. I've got a board, like a, tr uh, a Kanban flow board that I have just started implementing called Ideas, and I've got different columns in there, and I just have been throwing stuff into there because I had a bunch of stuff that was in my columns of like to do next, and it was just getting too big. And so I was like, I need to have the to do next mean what I'm actually really going to do next. Yeah. Right? Like next week or whatever in my next week column. And then the rest of the stuff is on this board. And I can look at that when I need to fill it. You know, and, uh, and the majority of that stuff that's on that board will never, ever get done because right. new things will come and priority, you know, priorities change. But I wish I could handle email the same way. But it's <laughs> such a hard. Like I, I wish there was some way I could know like what emails were important, and then like hit those. Well, email first. Gmail does that for you, right? It tags them as important, so there I you use, go. Just... I use multiple inbox. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if that actually works. I don't know if I could trust that system. No, either. it doesn't. I just. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's just random stuff gets flagged as important. So. Yeah, I've been using Sanebox, and it it tends to filter out the stuff that I can generally say is not important. Yeah, okay. And Sanebox, then, you said? Yeah, sanebox.com. Okay. I'm and so that. then you can train it from there. So you just move stuff into your inbox if it should go into your inbox, or you can uh, train it to put stuff into later if it should be in later. Is and, that a Gmail uh, plugin? Um... I don't think it works as a Gmail plugin. I think it actually accesses your account through IMAP and then oh, okay. moves stuff around. Hmm. Okay, I might have to. Or uses that. Gmail's APIs. It's one of the two. It only works on Gmail, so it's probably the latter, probably the APIs. Okay. But it it's pretty darn nice, and it's yeah. And so then occasionally I'll go look in. So it gives you Sane Archive, which is stuff that's older than like three months. You can configure all this stuff on their site, but I never go look at it anymore. Uh, Sane Bulk is um, like uh, social social media notifications and uh, stuff like that. And then um, Sane Later is stuff that's not urgent or important, but is stuff that you're probably going to need to get to sooner or later. Sane News in is uh, newsletters. And then there's a saying not spam where it actually rescues crap from spam. And <laughs> I actually had it rescue some client emails from spam and oh, stuff. Man. So that's pretty freaking nice. I'm like, I don't know what you did to make Gmail want to spam you, but or put you in spam. 
<laughs> You're in spam. So anyway, um, so yeah, so usually I'll blow through my inbox pretty fast, and yeah. then I'll go through Sane later, um, like once every day, and uh, yeah, you know, it's just it's gotten to the point now where to where, yeah, I want somebody else to be going through this stuff because. Ninety percent of it's stuff that I don't actually have to do myself. Yeah. Okay, I might have to check that out. That um. um and you can set up other rules too, but when you move it from one box to another, then it just automatically updates the rules. I like that idea of it going through your spam, because sometimes I for, I always forget to like look through there, and whenever I do look through there, I'm like, oh crap, how did that go to spam? Yep. <laughs> So that would that would be worth it for me. Yeah, I need something. Gosh, as as I keep like email still even with someone answering my email, like a lot of my email, it still becomes a big hassle. It's still at least like over an hour a task a day. Man. Yeah, which sucks. So That's brutal. Mine prob I probably spend if I sit down and I'm serious about answering all the emails that need answering, I could probably spend an hour, hour and a half every day. Yeah. But uh, the thing is, is yeah, there are way too many of them that I could give somebody my standard response for it, and they could just go and do the right thing with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, thanks for letting me know. I really appreciate your interest. I'm glad you're a fan of DevChat.tv, and then go report the bug on Kanban Flow for DevChat.tv. Or yeah. you know. Um, somebody emails in and says, hey, I'd really like you to mention this on your shows. You wouldn't believe how many of those I get. And, uh, <laughs> and you mention all of them, right? That's right. I mention all of them. <laughs> it's Our funny, audio yeah. listeners, I am shaking my head. <laughs> I answer all of them. I get, I get at least probably three or four people a week asking me to promote their giveaway. <laughs> yeah. I've got a kid response where I I give them my advertising rates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hardcore. Oh, well, I'm a media that. company oh. to some degree. Like yeah. yes, 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 yes. Like that means that I charge for promoting things. I don't just promote yeah. them for free. Like yeah. Other people are paying for this. Why should I promote your thing for free when someone else is paying me to promote their thing? Right? Yeah. yeah. Or mention it. Yeah. So one of the things I'm one of the, the strategies I'm seriously considering for my um, content marketing approach is uh, I'm thinking I'm seriously thinking about going back to the daily emails thing. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because um, so so I don't I I'm on still on uh, itty, biz, itty biz list, oh, okay. Okay. and she just went back to doing that, and because that's how she built that's actually how she built her business back in like 2008 was she just blogged every day. Yeah. And the stuff that she was blogging was not, like I've read some of her early posts, and it's not like going to get you, it's the kind of stuff that I want to write, basically. It's like the kind of stuff that's probably not going to get you a ton of SEO traffic, but it's like if you've got some traffic coming in, it's really great um, bonding with your audience. Like it's, it's you know, it's it was, it's like very emotional, um, kind of like emotional bonding type stuff. Story, a lot of good stories, um, not a lot of like the real epic how-to stuff that's going to get you the best SEO traffic. Um, so she gets like she used to complain before about getting like her some of her um, long tail traffic is for like cat videos. It's like she mentions cat videos in a in a post, you know, and like that's she gets like this huge whack of SEO traffic for cat videos. It's just like nice ridiculous. But um, but yeah, like I, now that I've got since the Twitter thing is working pretty well. I am my my list is growing pretty fast from that. Um, I'm thinking that I might just start doing daily emails and um, like daily broadcasts, basically, and do it about email marketing um, and uh, publish it all on my blog. Like, not really expecting I'd get a lot of great great traffic from that, but it's something I can I can retweet that stuff on Edgar. Um, and it would definitely like establish me as an authority and somebody with a voice on the topic. Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying to decide if I want to commit to that, though. <laughs> that that's my only caution is yeah. 
coming from the side of someone who is trying to get away from to automate their yeah. business more and trying to get away from commitment. Well, mm -hmm. but but again, it may get to the point where I mean, I think there's the like I said earlier at the very beginning when I was talking about being a hustle versus you know hustle versus artist mode. Like you're starting out with this new business, so you yeah. might have to be in hustle mode for a while. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just have a plan right. to transition from it. Like think mm -hmm. about like the mistakes I've made with some of my stuff is I never really thought about like what yeah. happens when you stop wanting to record Get Up and Code podcasts or like. <laughs> right. You know, um, but Chuck is really well set up because. Uh, because his podcasts are all po panel discussion podcasts, which is pretty dang awesome. Because it, you know, in hustle mode it works. It also works in artist mode where you could step back, like you can right. get out of there and not have to. So, so just think about right. that before you. Like, I'm not opposed to hustle mode. I mean, all my whole business was built on hustle mode, right? Right. Um, but you just well, got to think of the plan. What's appealing about this actually is that so this is pretty much the Ben Settle approach that he, he uses where. The emails, so he does daily emails, and he's done it for years. And yeah. the emails that he writes are fast. They're, he Some of them he writes in like 10 or 15 minutes. They're not like, it's not like an epic five to 800 word blog post. It's like, it's like some something interesting, some interesting, like he the other, other day he was talking about that movie, I can't remember the name of it now, but it's the wine movie um, that was really sideways. Uh-huh. That and um, he was taught his, he told a story about how when when Sideways came out um, in California, there's a line in there about like Merlot, and all of the like basically Merlot became like the leper of the wine community. No <laughs> one could sell it. Like the sales like fell off because it was like this derogatory comment about Merlot in this one movie that had like a twelve million dollar budget and it tanked like Merlot sales across the country. That's yeah. funny. And so yes, yeah, so he tells this little story, and then he's got like ties it to a business lesson related email, and that's and he's done. And it's like you know probably takes him 20 minutes a day on average to write them, and they're really valuable. You know they're valuable, um, but they're not. It's not like you're not going to get great SEO traffic from that. So you need some kind of traffic source if you're going to yeah. take that approach. And for me, like Twitter seems like it could be, it could be viable. Um, mm -hmm. Especially with Edgar, and I don't have to like I just stick these things up on my blog. I could even get a virtual assistant to where I'm just I write the thing, forward it off to the virtual assistant. They put it in Drip, they put it on my blog, they post yep. it to Edgar, and so it's like you know I could pretty much I could run my business from my iPad almost at that point. Yeah, that makes um, sense. But even yeah. if it takes you 15 minutes and you're doing it every day, just to realize that at some yeah. point you will want to do that. So maybe, yeah. <laughs> I mean, for him, he says it's therapeutic. He actually doesn't have to do it, and he still does it because he likes doing it. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I have my. There are certain things that people say, and there's what they actually. <laughs> <laughs> so I would. I don't know. I mean, it might be true. I'm not saying that he's he's not. Yeah. Well, and I, I mean, it may also be true that he's not writing all the emails himself anymore either. No, he definitely does. He definitely. I'm. I'm. I'm pretty positive that he does. Okay. Um, he doesn't work well with people. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Um, but yeah, and, and Naomi's actually gone back to doing this now after getting away from it. She got she she got herself psyched up where and kinda like I've felt this way too, where she got like with with um, blog posts, there's like the bar now is so high to stand out, you have to really do something, you know, really, really good to stand out. And she just she got herself in like this four month writer's block or four, uh, four year long writer's block stretch where she had a hard time writing anything. And she's yeah. like, screw it. I'm just going to go back to the way that the way I used to do it. It was fun. It was easy. And people loved it. And so, and I, you know, I don't know. I really like the format. Yeah. So I'm considering it. I think what I might do is like try it for three or four weeks and not send them out. Oh, I see. Yeah, just and, writing it, yeah. Yeah, see if it's something... Because it would get me warmed up. You know, it would kind of get me... If I did it first, it would get me in the groove. It would be, like, low pressure because I'm not... One of the things with writing for clients is, like, it's kind of hard to get... Mentally, I have to be, like, feeling on, you know, and I have to yeah. feel positive to think that I can do this for the client for clients and have them appreciate it. Um, so if I had something quick and easy and fun that I could write for myself to kind of get... Get things get things going uh, every morning. That could yeah. be helpful. 
Yeah, that's a good idea. Actually, do that. Do do like do it for like a few weeks without sending it out for two reasons. One, like it's a test period, and if you're like, man, that this sucks, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, you didn't commit to the thing. And two, if you do, if you do go forward with it, then you have a buffer. Right. A nice oh yeah, buffer. yeah, exactly. I'd like to be at least yeah. a week ahead. Yeah. So I'm not stressing day to day. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I'm kind of the same way with the videos, right? I mean. I had time to record yesterday, but I just I didn't feel yeah. up to it at all. And it was all emotional and, you know, coming down yeah. off of a bunch of travel and stuff. And, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, when you when you get to those places where you can either hype yourself up, and a lot of times I can, mm -hmm. um, and we've talked about that on a previous episode, um, but yesterday I just couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, some days, yeah, yeah. you just got to find a way to either get it done or... Yeah, I mean, if there's no pressure, then that that that's nice. Yeah, yeah. My last, the, the last time I tried to be a writer, <laughs> <laughs> my, my my last writing job, um, I just I, the the procrastination thing killed me. I mean, I I did I did good work, and I just I was slow, and I mean, it got me in trouble with my boss. Like she was she was just not a good person to begin with, but. Um, you know, she had a, some legitimate gripes in that I, it was taking me a long time to do some of this stuff, and so I've really got to, I've got, and, and, and like, it, I'd get in this tailspin where she'd be mean to me, <laughs> and then I would not be in a mood to write, you know, and it's like, that doesn't just, that's a spiral that just goes and goes. <laughs> yeah. So I got to really guard, I'm going to have to really guard that, guard against that to make this work. Yeah. Well, I mean, and you've changed to the degree that, like, yes. you're, you can ship things. So, like, yeah. I mean, once you get to the point where it's, like, you can ship things, then it, it, it changes, right? It, it, right? There's a distinct mindset between people that are like, oh, I got to, you know, and it's like, well, hell, whatever happens, the thing is going out at 9 this yeah. day. So, mm -hmm. like... I'm gonna write it, and it's gonna go out, and that's you know when, once you get it, once you have that kind of confidence, then it's like I don't know. I guess it's I, I don't know how to describe what it is. I guess it's it, it's just like being comfortable shipping things. It's it's also just this uh, adherence to deadlines, like where you're like the yeah. deadlines mean something. Like right, you know, there's kind of two people in life, like people who like care about deadlines and people who don't. And like once you become that. Right. Then, then you have the it's amazing the, the the ability you have to ship things once you believe yeah. deadlines are actually deadlines. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I'm actually very glad that I'm transitioning to being you know self-employed via this client route because having other people give me deadlines is going to be helpful. Yeah. As I transition, because I still I still struggle. Like if it were if I were just you know if I just quit my job to try to work on Sublime Text stuff, I think I would still struggle. Yeah, with get you know getting stuff out because there's there's no external deadlines. So this is a happy. This will be a good, you know, halfway step toward that. Yeah, that daily email email thing might work out then too in that in that way too because, I mean, that's yeah. one thing. Like I've set so many. Like I've got like I, I don't ever miss a week. Like everything goes out. Yeah. YouTube videos, blog posts, everything. Um, so. Yeah. So that that that's helped me because now it's like now I can't even there's not even a question it's like I don't even consider that I'm not going to write a blog post this week. So. Yeah, I did it for about a month and a half or two months with Sublime and I really enjoyed it. But what was killing me was having to do the research. Yep. Every day, like I had mm -hmm. before, I could write the stupid thing. I had to have a tip, and the tip had to be something I it was always something I had to figure out or research. So it would take an hour. You know, the actual writing of the email probably took 15 or 20 minutes, but the the whole thing would take me an hour or hour and a half, and it was just not sustainable at that point. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, but I really that's... liked it, and the, my subscribers liked it too, um, although so a lot of them failed because <laughs> I was sending them emails every day. Yeah. Um, but... but, yeah, I mean, it's the same thing with the videos again, is that I have to go do research before I can make the video. Yep. Even yep. if it's something I'm familiar with, I have to go and, um, you know, I have to prepare for it at least so I know what I'm talking right. through. And there are usually a couple of points there that I have to figure out. So. Right. Yeah, and for me to do a blog post, typically, if it's going to be something that I think is worth publishing and worth seeing, for me, like, I find it, it takes me four to six hours. Yeah. Um, and I probably mm -hmm. could get faster at that as I have more 
like just more experiences to draw on where I'm not having to research stuff in marketing that will probably come down but it's just you know that for me to write a blog post every week right now I don't know that's like that's like 10 to 15 percent of my working week if I'm looking at 40 hours so mm -hmm. I'm not really sure if I want to go that route yeah yeah I mean yeah it depends if you can bring it down to like I said the, the yeah. time well, one thing that I helps don't, you with, write really fast John I don't I, I need to get faster like it seems like you can just crank stuff out in like almost straight through in a first draft and I don't know what it is about for me what usually takes the longest is actually not the writing it's just deciding what it is that I'm gonna say yeah and outlining it and once I have all that it takes it's really fast but I don't know that process of, of figuring out what I'm gonna say is what, what takes me that probably takes if, I, if it takes me six hours that probably takes me three Oh, I see. Yeah. You know, well, that I don't know if I just think slow. <laughs> well, there's a couple of things. Well, okay, so like what I'm doing now is um, it takes me approximately four Pomodoros to write a 3,000-word blog post. Yeah, that's um, insane. Um, but um, I, I ship the first draft. I mean, I go through it after I'm done and I write, make edits. I, I spend a little bit of time outlining, just like I, I, I really time box it to like, I, I usually, of that, of those four Pomodoros, I spend the first Pomodoro um, thinking and outlining, and that's mm -hmm. time boxed. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing just that just helps me in general is to have the end result, uh, like, D deadlined, right? So, um, so if I'm like, okay, I need to get this done, like you know, having the quotas, you know, having this blog post done today, having this, right? Um, it mm -hmm. it sort of penalizes me for spending wasting time, like you know, like in, instead of doing the essential, um, right. because if something ends up taking me all day, well, then that's a lot of pain and a lot of other stuff that doesn't get done. So, um, and then right. also making that kind of the top priority, but but I think time boxing the thing, um, being able to, and, and it's something like, I mean, the whole soft skills book, I pretty much wrote the entire thing is, is like first draft, right? right. Um, and that's because I've been writing like two to 3,000 words in a couple of hours, you know, for a, a long time and, right. and shipping the first draft so that I've gotten to this point where I can, I've gotten comfortable I don't know. I, I guess like the, I, I think of it that there's two ways that people write. Like one way that people write, I think, is that um, they they spend a lot of time getting really good at like revising, revising their writing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then they and they start off with a better product than I do uh, because they care, take more care and time in, in the thing that they produce before they ship it. So when they when they when they first started out writing versus when I first started out writing, my stuff was total crap garbage um, and theirs was 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 good right um, but um, but from there you don't really get better doing that because there's nothing to really improve like like you get better at revising things maybe in, in um, but um, but over over the course just following my blog as I you know it's been like I guess six years now uh, I found that my writing has improved and improved where I was I started out really, really crappy and everything I was still shipping the first draft and it was crap and I shouldn't have been shipping the first draft, but now I'm getting to the point where when I ship a first draft, I mean I'm no Hemingway or anything, but the first draft that I ship out is better than most people's uh, writing that they've put five or six drafts into. Mm -hmm. um, and just simply because I've gotten good at at, at doing that. I, I don't know how exactly how to describe it, but I think there's there's like this when you put this force constraint and you force yourself to just ship yeah. ship, you like you it forces you to improve, you know, and, and you don't spend so much time worrying about the things that aren't aren't quite as important. I don't know. Like it's not to say that I couldn't polish my writing. Of course I could polish right. it, but I'd rather be able to ship quickly like something that's like 80 percentile rather than mm -hmm. you know than, than to, to take five times as long and ship like that 95 percentile thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's almost like like that first draft writing is a separate skill. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's almost like it's a separate skill, right? Because you, and, and you get, I guess it's like this, like if, if, you, if you rely on revisions, 
Mm -hmm. Then your then your voice doesn't develop as as well, I think, in your in your writing originally because you know you're just going to go back and edit. You just want to get it on paper now, yeah, right. But if you're thinking that what I write is what I'm going to ship, then you it sort of forces your brain to like to learn how to speak in that voice the first time that you write it down. So for me, that's actually paralyzing, though. Yeah. To um the only like. What I found is, like, when I'm writing an email for a client, I have to start. A lot of times, um, I start in the middle, because the end is important. And the beginning is really important. Yeah. <laughs> and so I have to start in the middle just to kind of get myself warmed up. And if I if I try to write, one little trick that I've started doing is, um, I heard this from a psychologist actually. So he they did a study, and if you ask somebody, like, um why did you do something? Like, why did you do X? Uh -huh. Then they tend to freeze up. But if you ask them, why might you have done that? Then it opens up the possibility for, like, multiple multiple answers from them. Oh, I see. Then they, it, it start, they start to, you know, they start to loosen up and they start to be able to, to, uh, to talk to you more. So for me, like, if I try to think, okay, how do I start this? Then I, I go just brain shutdown mode. But if I think, how might I start this, and I come up with two or three, two or three false starts, um, and you know, take a, take a couple runs at it, that usually works better for me. Oh yeah, I'm not opposed to that. In fact, yeah. I start in the middle a lot of times, and then add the introduction afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but but uh, what I'm saying is that like just knowing that what you're going to write, you're going to ship. Like yeah. if it, if you're starting in the middle, even is is I think is and, and time boxing. I mean, the thing is like yeah. Like, just time box the thing. Just like say, I'm going to spend one Pomodoro thinking about the idea and uh, and, and outlining it. Um, it. It's kind of funny. I, I try to like, and then and then you got to just go with it and pick because because the because then you're just gonna once it flows and you start writing, it's not going to matter as much. Like you know, I don't know. Like, like you, it doesn't have to be as detailed. Out. It, it's kind of weird. Like if someone gives you a topic, you you almost got to like. I, sometimes I just have to say, okay. Here, here's this is like charades. John, you just pulled out. You know, write seven ways that you're messing up your programming career. And here you go. And now, right. now you have to go. Now go. <laughs> Improv. Yeah, timer. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, because that works better than like here's a big whiteboard of all the things you could write about. Like, what should you write about? You know, it's it's better to yeah. like you brainstorm the thing. You've got it time box, and you're like, okay, here it is, and and then go. And it's like, and then you know, brief outline like. Like my outlines usually have like six points in them, and then go, um, and then because because I just I just look for when I do an outline I just look for like like four five six points that I can just write about because I know that I can write about it if I have that, that. yeah but that's I don't know that's how I do it, it it's it might not be the it, it it seems to work like I'm I'm fairly efficient with it but um I think what I, where I bog down like more of my thinking bogs down is. I'm really looking to um, when I'm outlining. I'm really looking to like string the logic chain together in a way where I can see how everything connects, and I'm not like having to make those calls on the fly as I'm going. And that for me is what takes that usually takes a while. Yeah. To yeah. just get my head around the logic of whatever it is that I'm going to try to write. But whatever it is, yeah. I mean, time box it still though. Even yeah. If you do yeah. that, T time box it, give yourself yeah, more right. time. Yeah. You know. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And yeah, as far as tying it all together, I mean, you can still get the the major points in. You know, the things that you know aren't necessarily going to change when you tie it together with something else. You know, if you start in the middle. Mm -hmm. Hey, I, I get, here's a great example. Okay, have you ever been to a hibachi restaurant? No. Oh darn! Have you been to? <laughs> huh? Hibachi? No, are you know Japanese steakhouse where they like bounce the egg on the knife and all that. Yes. Stuff? At least you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I've, I've no, been. I don't. I go to one of those every year for my birthday. So. Well, you've never you've never seen this, Josh, where the, like the chef like bounces an egg on on a knife and cracks it in the air and like like does I've all this. Like the, yeah, I've seen like on TV just like the the fast chopping and that sort of thing. <laughs> okay, okay. So so that's a perfect example, right? Mm -hmm. I I think of what I'm talking about. You know, the, because those guys are operating, they're practicing doing this fast, 
mm -hmm. doing this kind of crazy stuff, and it's it's essentially time box, right? It's like you're like throwing eggs up in the air, and like you're doing like doing it super fast. Or if you've ever gone to the Mongolian Grill, even like some of those some of those yeah, guys. I haven't. Man, you're just living the sheltered <laughs> life there. Um, all you do is work, man. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So you, got, you, like, told me not to, you told me not to eat out, so. <laughs> Um, but but anyway, those guys are working under a very constrained environment, yeah. which is forcing them like uh, compare that to just a normal chef who cracks eggs and cuts things every day, and they mm -hmm. never ever develop anywhere near that skill level of that specific constrained environment. Like the yeah. the, the hibachi guys, those Japanese steakhouse guys, they can cook up and crack a uh, egg and and do all this stuff. It, not only more skillfully but faster than anyone else uh, can because they're practicing under the constraint. Right. Uh, and so, so sometimes, like putting that time box and practicing under that constraint results in a like it's it's like a crucible. It's like a, it it, yep. it forces your skill to come out. Whereas if you have this long period, you know, it it it, it you don't gain from you you don't gain. Yeah. You don't, You might do a good job, but you you do, you're not gonna. It's not gonna force you to to grow. Yeah, I suppose. that makes yeah. sense. But there is yeah. some measure of practice. I mean, you know, John has yep. pretty well outlined that. So, you, at first, I'm sure these guys are just doing it slowly and you know making sure that they get the technique down that allows them to then perform. And right. uh, you know, so John saying he can write a blog post in four pomodoros, and uh, you know, for you in your air, you know, whatever area you're going to be blogging in, you may find that, yeah, right now it's going to be six or eight Pomodoros, but, you know, as you practice and as you, you know, put those constraints upon yourself, then you're going to get better at it. You'll yeah. get better at doing it more quickly. You'll get better at identifying the parts that take time that you don't need to take time on. You'll start being able to identify um, the major points more quickly, you know, and all of that stuff. And once you develop those skills, yeah. then it becomes a whole lot easier yeah. to, yep. you know, to just get it all done. And yeah. at first, you almost don't even know what you need to learn in order to get better. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, so you start doing it, and then it's, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I sure waste a lot of time Googling this stuff when most of the answers are usually on Stack Overflow or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just doing yeah. an exercise of just saying, like, okay... If you if you want to do a blog post every week, Josh, you have you have three hours. Here's the time block. You've set this aside. You have the at the end of in in two hours and thirty minutes, you're going to do a quick sanity check to see where you are, and in the last thirty minutes of your time is going to be spent cleaning it up to ready to be ready for ship for shipping. It's like you know when when the teacher's like, okay, five minutes. We're cl it's cleanup time. It's like Sometimes you got to do something like so. Then you have got like a, a definite time box, and it, and it gives you enough time. Like, cause you, I think a lot of people mess up when they time box because they're like, okay, I'm setting aside three hours to write this paper, and then they hit the end of three hours, and they're like, well, I haven't written a conclusion, or like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, but if you set it so yeah. it's like at two and a half hours, okay, ding. Now you have to finish up. Now it's cleanup time. Now we're putting away the paints, right? It's like okay, so now you're putting now you know you're doing that, and now you're actually finishing, and now you're actually time box. Because now if you're only halfway through the paper, you're like, well, I guess this is going to be a two-part series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or I'm like you're yeah. you're forced to constrain to that rule. Like you have yeah. to do it, and you have to ship it, um, and and you give yourself the buffer. So anyway. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think I, I I'm actually thinking that I'm gonna try. Well, we'll see. I'm I'm either this week or next week, depending on my deadlines. I'm gonna start doing the daily email thing and try. I think I could box it to one pomodoro. I should be able to do that. Yeah. Right. But it's, I mean, all I need is it's like two or three hundred words, basically, mm -hmm. and make one point, um, make it entertaining, and um. Yeah, I, I but like sometimes the, writing shorter content is harder than writing longer content. Um, not for me. Actually, okay. yeah, because I I tend to like when I have to write something longer, um, I because my writing is so concise that I don't I have a very like I had a very hard time in college hitting paper like word counts in papers, yeah, you know like the ten page paper I would always be like I'd say eight pages and I'd actually go in and have to add in filler because like I'd made all my points and you know I I I'm always chopping stuff out when I'm writing so. I'd actually have to go back in and add, like, you know, 
a page and a half of filler just to hit, hit the stupid words, hit the page count. And this is why traditional education sucks. sucks. <laughs> yes, I know. I th I think that the page the page count thing is, is a, an abomination. Um, but yeah, so for me, yeah, the, the it, doing it every day I think would be really good just to keep me in that groove. And I, for me, once a day or once a day is a lot easier to do than once a week. Yeah. Um, I have a much better success with something I do every day. And I think trying to write a blog post spread out over a week would be really painful. Because yeah, I have like yeah, half an hour a day, so... No, you just sit down and pound it out if you're going to do something. Yeah. Yep. I have to say that's really frustrating because my problem was always figuring out what to cut. Really? Oh, yeah. I don't cut anything. <laughs> like, I've, I've been doing Toastmasters and I've been uh, doing these uh, talks... And yeah, I'm always the the little yellow light comes on, and then 30 seconds later the red <laughs> light comes on. They have a <laughs> on the back of the light, and uh, and then I'm like, oh crap, because I still have I haven't even gotten close to the conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm getting better at that, you know. It's it's I, but yeah, I have to be merciless to cut stuff. It's it's never the other way around. So, all right, well, I'm not going to commit to doing that this week, but I think uh, if all goes well this week, I might try it. Otherwise, I'll probably start next week. Awesome. And see if I can get through a month of it or so and, and then start sending them out. My list is going to be in for a shock because <laughs> I've been pretty quiet. Like, yeah. I, I, have a, I have some autoresponders set up, um, and then I think I probably will actually just say, hey, this is what I'm going to be doing. And I might give them the option to opt out or get an RSS version or something. I don't know. We'll see. But the, the nice thing about that, though, also is it's demonstrating the skill that I want to sell. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't have... Like, I can sell affiliate products, too, and stuff, but, um, yeah, like, the just kind of demonstrating what I'm actually doing is nice because it's constant portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, uh, before we wrap it up, before we do the thoughts, uh, the Onto Programmers Retreat. <laughs> retreat, yeah. retreat. What about it? Now, do you need to move it, John? Is this where we're No, no, no. We just got to get, we got to start taking money here. We got, oh, yeah. we're, we're running out of time. Um, I found uh, a terrific place in uh, Puerto Vallarta. It's a little nicer than the other place. It's real close to the beach, and almost everybody who came would get their own room. Oh, that's pretty awesome. All right, let's do it then. Let's um, let's get that pay. Uh, I was trying to get Derek I, to do it. <laughs> Derek's not here again, so we'll just volunteer him again. Yeah. Well, I can set uh, up an Eventbrite page or something. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to do that and start collecting money? Yeah. I'll, I'll set it up. Um, okay. I need to be reminded what the dates are. Let's let the guy in that's in debt to collect the money. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no temptation there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, I got all my debt paid off. <laughs> How are we looking free. on money for the retreat? <laughs> uh, okay, I've got I've got the dates set from the 12th through the 15th. Okay, I just couldn't remember off the top yeah, of my head. I need to write it down and go. Oh, okay. Okay, right. so so for people that would be signing up though, they would be um, it would be Tuesday and Wednesday. It'd be the 13th and 14th, right? Because what would happen mm -hmm. is we'd all kind of fly in on the 12th, which is Monday, um, and we probably have some kind of dinner or something, right, because people are going to be ar ar arriving at different times. The 13th and the 14th of October will be actually us um, uh, hanging out and, and doing, like, workshop type of, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching and, and group sessions type of... We don't, we'll have to figure out what the schedule will be, but... Um, uh, and then the 15th would be just us, uh, like, uh, our doing... Uh, our entre programmers stuff, and then uh, and then everyone goes back home on the sixteenth. I think I could or, do what my aunt yeah. did for a family vacation. She uh, she used my grandparents' money to book the condo, and then uh, she told everybody that she was going to find somebody to take the latter half of the week, and then she had herself a little vacation after everyone left. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> wow! Awesome. So yeah, so put up the Eventbrite page and start collecting. Uh, I guess what we say, twelve hundred bucks. I think we'll make sure covers yeah. us there. Yeah, I, th I think that'll do it. 
And if it's close, I'm okay fudging a little bit and paying a little bit out of pocket for it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and it just it'll be refundable for everyone that's listening. If you if uh, if for some reason we don't get enough people, we're only gonna open ten slots. Yeah. Uh, so if we get less than ten, uh, then it, we'll kind of have to make a call and see if we if we have enough what the budget is if it's if it's yeah. still worth yes. worth putting on. But but yeah. So uh, so that'll go into effect. I mean that should be up by the time that we. Um, uh, so sign up still at the Entre programmers on the email list, and then we'll uh, yeah we'll send an email out when it's ready. Yeah, cool. Yeah, awesome. that's entreprogrammers dot com slash retweet retreat we tweet. <laughs> I think we tweet we tweet whoever whoever did this last time did the same thing. Uh, retreat twenty dash. Uh, oh gosh, it's retreat twenty fifteen. No yeah no dash. Well, Oops. the other thing is is we can change that page. I mean. If it, you know, once we have a sales page up, yeah, then we can we could just right. send them directly there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you we want to might... be awesome. Yeah, and come hang out with us. <laughs> yeah. Give come, us your money. Come, come to our wood tweet. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> you guys want to wood tweet with us? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, thoughts for the day, for the week. Who's uh, gonna crack first? <laughs> <laughs> Awkward silence. I don't know. I think I'm gonna go with the time boxing stuff that you guys have been beating me up about because that's. I need to. I need to do that. I need to. Like I, I've noticed that my writing stuff seems to get done. Um, like you know, if I have, if I have two days, if I have four hours, if I have two hours, somehow it all magically seems to still get done. So, uh, I think I need to uh, to be more aggressive with myself on that. Yep. So I have a thought, and this is something I've been thinking. I'm probably going to tick some people off, but I really don't care because this is who I am. Um, uh, at the so I'm going to be going to Dallas for the um, podcast movement, and uh, they announced the um, keynote speakers, and one of them is Kent Beck or Kent Beck, Glenn Beck. <laughs> different people. <laughs> yeah. Glenn Beck. Very, very different. Yeah. As you can imagine, I mean, some people really dislike Glenn for his uh, position on things. He's he's been a bit controversial in several areas. Yeah. Um, you know, I I happen to be a fan of his show, um, but that that's neither here nor there. But a lot of people got really angry that uh, that he was going to come and speak. And for me, in in a situation where I'm doing podcasts and I'm trying to reach out to people and grow an audience and things like that. I mean, he has done a tremendous job at that stuff. Yeah. And so um, my thought really just boils down to don't shortchange yourself by only listening to the people you agree with. Exactly. Totally agree. Yeah. Um, because, you know, you, you probably, if you vehemently disagree with everything that Glenn says on his show or vehemently agree with people who are ultra-conservative and don't want the government involved in anything in their lives, and he's talking about... Um, and you know, and he's talking about how to get rid of a program that's kind of something that you care about. He still his business is huge, and what he does is huge, yeah. and the lessons he can teach you are huge. And so, yeah, don't shortchange yourself. You don't have to convert to his way of thinking, but at least get challenged by it, and at least go and mimic the things that really make a difference there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, there I've I've paid attention to people that I don't agree with. I've had deep discussions with people that I, I philosophically don't agree with as far as like their, their view on life or their view on uh, anything, really. Um, and we, we come away being friends because the things that I can't explain or justify are things that I need to go think about, and the things that, I do, that they do well are things that I benefit from. So, yeah, don't shortchange yourself by ruling out the people you don't agree with. Yeah, I totally agree. You're here. The, uh, actually, I just heard Glenn Beck on Tim Ferriss' podcast because we got to put Tim Ferriss. You know, <laughs> said. Yes, he he was on that, and he had it was really interesting listening to him. He had some very interesting things, like because he he's 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 actually a very objective person, which is very surprising. Yeah. Like you would think that he would be very close-minded, but he's not. He is very no, objective. He's, he's extremely objective and he's a very smart guy. Very he well, he earned uh, in in 2014 he earned 90 million dollars. 
Yeah. Yeah. So well, like, <laughs> if if you go probably and a few you listen, business lessons you can learn from people like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you go listen to him five years ago and then listen to him today, and he's changed his stance on a lot of things. He has, yeah, that's true. So, let's see. Okay, so my my thought is um, is uh, is it, wait wait for the hell yes like like you know like look for a perfect mm-hmm. fit like you know as I've been trying to fire, hire an, hire an editor it's not not that I couldn't have hired someone I, I just feel like and 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 again I maybe I'll change my mind here but um but but I, I felt like uh, there are certain times when, when you when you know oh yes this is the person or yes this is the opportunity right um sometimes mm-hmm. you got to wait for those those things uh especially in hiring i think is like that's a really important thing but or, mm-hmm. or, or working with people right uh, not in taking action like to obviously take action do things that you're supposed to you know get get don't just wait and mm-hmm, ha about should this is this a perfect action but when it's working with people uh and in, in, in projects like there's sometimes it's best to wait for the yes this is the hell yes type of thing so mm-hmm. totally and it's funny because every time that I don't do that, uh, well, not every time, but many times when I don't do that, you know, it it turns out that it's like I just don't want to do this anymore. But I have a commitment at that point. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it turns into a hell yes, but most of the time it doesn't. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I've hired different people, property management companies, lawyers, accountants that I was like, uh, and then I was like, well, yeah, maybe that's just me. And then it always turned out bad. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, guys. Same bad right. time. Same bad channel. I'll talk to you next week. All right. All See right. Ya. Bye. Want to start a business, but you just know how to code. Listen to John, Josh, and Derek as we figure it out. We are the entrepreneurs programmers, and we'll teach you straight up to be developers.